let's lift our hands and give him all the praise. Mighty presence in this place. Jesus, we worship you. We worship you. We lift our hands and we give you all the praise. All the worship. From everlasting to everlasting. Let the name of the Lord alone be glorified. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless you. Lift your voice and bless you. It's the King of Kings. Surely the Lord of Lords. Thank you, Jesus. We are not ungrateful for your mercy, for your faithfulness, for your goodness, for your wisdom, for your love, for your kindness. Can you open your mouth in one minute and just thank the Lord? Lord, I thank you.
of surrender, not just a special rendition. I will rise. This is why we are here, oh God. That you be glorified in our lives. This is why we gather week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out. It is for your glory. It is for your glory that you find a place in our lives, that you find a place in Koinonia. And Lord, we decree and declare that for as long as we are here you will keep being glorified no man no empire no ambition will rise above the purposes of the kingdom we declare that we are a people determined to see your glory come lord regardless of our personal ambitions and desires we seek only that jesus and him be glorified the fullness and the essence of all that he is be revealed. I pray in the name of Jesus that you truly be glorified. Can we just sing this song, wonderful song? Be lifted high. Be lifted high. Ah. For your glory be lifted high. Sing it for his glory. That's the essence, that's the essence of all that we do. Be lifted high for your glory. Hallelujah. Father, once again be glorified tonight. In the name of Jesus, be glorified. We surrender everything to you. And we declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that you alone will be glorified in this place. In the name of Jesus. Just sit down quietly. Such a strong atmosphere. I want us to pray tonight. Um, but the teaching that I'm bringing tonight will really, really change us. Praise the Lord. For me, I, I have been changed by it and I'm being changed by it and I guarantee you, no matter how, how much you have not felt a sense of spiritual progress, you will feel one tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I've been studying personally the ministry of Jesus. Um, once and again, I, I have the opportunity to study very carefully what Jesus did, how he did ministry when he walked upon the earth. Because the Bible tells us that we should look unto Jesus, calls him the author and the finisher of our faith. In other words, everything we do in this kingdom life must be within the jurisdiction of that which was demonstrated by the Christ himself. He not only came as a substitute for us, he came as a model. He came as a masterpiece of God's intention so that through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, we will align everything we do to be consistent with both his ideology and his doings. It is only when that happens, listen carefully, that God can be glorified. Jesus has become for us the model of that which can satisfy God. God can only be satisfied in the Christ 
and in anyone who does anything that is reflective of the Christ the only basis for God to be satisfied in the life of a man is when Jesus is being glorified and when every activity that man is engaged in is a reflection of both the person the character of the Christ so I've been studying the ministry of Jesus and I'm telling you um, Jesus is truly and literally the greatest inspiration in my life his, his model his understanding every time I study the Gospels I am I am amazed at his spirituality his intelligence his paradigm and his approach to life his approach to people his definition and his approach of ministry his approach of success everything about Jesus Christ inspires me and so as I study him I check my life I check koinonia I check the things that we do against the benchmark of the model the reference that has been created and if at any point I find myself short of that standard or I find our leadership and our approach in the ministry short of that standard then he does not repent to look like us are we, to, are we together now the responsibility is upon us to realign ourselves so that we reflect him in his fullness and um, it never tires me I've, I've studied the gospel again and again I don't know how many times but quite frankly every time you study scripture with a new light and a new understanding it seems to me as though the higher you rise in the spirit the more certain things in scripture open up to you in a way you will never believe they were there not because you are not aware of their reality but there is an understanding that makes certain things now open to you because you now have both an experience with God an experience with life that can help you understand those things more personally so the more I grow spiritually the more emotionally connected I am I I no longer just study the Bible for the 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 spiritual education necessarily I I, I see myself I when I study the Bible I'm, I'm very emotional about it many times I'll have to just close the Bible and fight tears because I look at these scriptures and I know how true it is let me tell you something the more you grow in God the more emotionally connected you are to the study of the word you no longer study just for information you you literally become emotionally connected to it because you are rising at a frequency that is closer to the state Jesus and the apostles were when they wrote this so when you study the Bible from that height you are able to not only understand what they are writing but discern the motivation you can literally feel the emotions around the things that they wrote and this is what has been happening to me as I study the Gospels and um, I rediscovered a few things there are things I have known but then for me the Lord nailed it in a way that blessed me so powerfully and part of that is what I'll be sharing tonight briefly and then trust God that we pray hallelujah I have studied many concepts I have taught them um, the concept of sin the concept of holiness the concept of righteousness the concept of the kingdom kingdom advancement the concept of success and prosperity the concept of faith all of these are very important kingdom concepts that must be understood by the believer because if any of these concepts are misunderstood or inaccurately understood they will sponsor error in the life of a believer though well-meaning you will find yourself with a frame of understanding that may shortchange you from experiencing and living the fullness of the life that Jesus gave us. Hallelujah. And um, Philippians chapter 2, please. We are going to read 3 and 4 as a foundation for the things that I'll be sharing tonight. My teaching tonight 
seeks to build in us in a greater measure the character of the Christ as we prepare to wrap up the year we have seen the hand of God in remarkable ways and God has really helped us we have enjoyed his benevolence and his grace once and again he will bring in words like this that file us that build us that align us so that our work will be very productive say amen Philippians chapter 2 I'll read 3 and 4 pay attention it says let nothing be done through strife or vain glory but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves verse 4 look not every man on his own things but every man also on the things of others when you find the new translations it's an attempt to say that you pay attention to the needs of others above your need i i want to talk um well i would just start here but I, I'm, I'm really not going to dwell there on the concept the root cause of majority of the challenges that believers have listen please the root cause of jealousy the root cause of envy listen carefully the root cause of lust and addictions the root cause of sin the root cause of um, selfishness the root cause of covetousness you see all of these attributes listen let me teach you something you see spiritual things we know it by now are more grave and more serious whether good or bad than physical things are we together now did you know that um, God forbid but come if it's an example please if I get this lady pregnant what did I say is an example listen are we together now I'm very serious tonight laugh now because I'm sure that you will not need to laugh again as we continue if I get this lady pregnant for instance listen it will look more regrettable because there is something obvious her stomach will protrude are we together but if i lost after this lady now she doesn't get pregnant by me lusting after her so i will think i am free are, are we are we together now if i slap this lady and there are marks of my hands on her face you call it wickedness and you say this guy is wicked because there is a physical expression but if i hold bitterness and jealousy bitter anger and rage sorry my dear against her it's easy for you to think i'm a spiritual man are we together now let me tell you something i have discovered bless you darling you can pick up your it is it is easier it is easier listen in fact in my opinion i know that sin is sin but in my opinion what the bible calls the sin of the spirit have you read that there is the sin of the flesh that can have physical evidences they can have regrettable consequences immediately you are punished for it you receive embarrassment for it and it's over but what the bible calls the sin of the spirit that may not find any physical expression is more deadly listen is more dangerous it has the highest ability to choke your spiritual progress are we together now and for many believers when you begin to walk in the kingdom because you are focusing on other things like the anointing you know faith trying to understand redemption understanding the Pauline epistles understanding a lot of things you know the miraculous visions prophecies the gifts of the spirit because of your focus on these charismatic dimensions of truths or the principles of the kingdom very little attention is paid to these very deep spiritual things in fact usually we interpret them to be basic we just feel i mean that that's let's let's talk of great things like power miracles etc etc 
but as you rise in God you will discover that the text of your dealing with God will no longer be physical things are we together when God begins to deal with you at a mature dimension you will find out that his concentration will be the motivation behind everything he's not as interested um, in the physical expression of it as it is the root cause the motivation behind everything that you do if you're following me say amen, amen. and so i found out that the root cause of all of these things not most of them all of them is in one word one simple word it's called self-centeredness we call it self but the word is self-centeredness not selfishness self-centeredness everybody say it self-centeredness this is the root cause of sin any kind this is the root cause of any expression of the flesh in fact it is the doorway to the flesh finding expression when you are studying the spirit man and the man of the flesh it's impossible for you to study the man of the spirit and the man of the flesh without understanding the foundation listen the bible says the axe is laid at the root of the tree so when jesus is dealing with a matter he does he forgets about the expressions and goes to the root of the tree and attempts to hit it right there because when the root is destroyed then all the leaves will dry off naturally are we together now self-centeredness our human nature has been so designed that the motivation listen subconsciously behind every activity we do on earth is to find a way of gratifying our desires be it pleasures be it a sense of ambition whatever it is and that is not wrong in itself except for the fact that in God's economy listen please if at any point you are found pursuing anything that does not have a direct bearing to the advancement of the kingdom and the enthronement of Christ experientially that entire activity is useless are we together now listen I have discovered as I study the Bible and I've read my Bible a number of times every story captured in scripture was only captured because of the appearance of that story with respect to Jesus and his purposes many things happened during different dispensations but certain stories were omitted because they did not have a direct bearing to the advancement of the kingdom are we together so every story that found its way to the bible only found its way because of the alignment of that story to the purposes of the kingdom that means in god's economy please listen the degree to which you are featured at any given dispensation is the degree to which your life and everything about your life can contribute to enthroning Christ are we together now so if the let's say the history of the church in Zaria is to be written from 2014 to 2016 if the Holy Ghost were to inspire men to write you will find out that many important things that happen in Zaria will not be recorded there are we together God will only focus on the activities that were centered around his kingdom when you study I mean people who have read archaeology and history and all of that you will know that concurrently at the point certain things were being recorded in scripture certain historical things were happening at that same time but the Bible did not see the need to include them because they had no contribution in the understanding of Christ and his purposes are we together now so if God is going to write a little story about your life you will think he will write when you went to the market you will think he will write when you went to ABU anything that cannot relate to his purposes in your life will not be captured 
are you getting what i'm saying now this brothers and sisters is the foundation of our work with god and this state i just explained to you is the greatest enemy of the flesh the flesh thrives upon ownership the flesh thrives upon um personal ambition listen listen you have to understand this if you want to be spiritual so the bible says in first john chapter 2 when you read from verse 16 he says love not the world this is john the apostle now teaching us he says love not the world neither the things listen that are in the world he didn't say don't have them 15 it says love not the world neither the things that are in the world right it says if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him then he breaks down these things into three categories for all that is in the world 16 the lust of the flesh category one the the challenges that you experience by reason of having a material body the limitations that you are bound to experience because you possess a body number two he says the loss of the eyes then number three the pride of life he says is not of the father but is of the world so john the beloved having been mentored directly by jesus christ and understood the 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 very essence of the kingdom life is teaching us in his epistle and he's saying look if you want to be spiritual people you must come to a point where this self must be destroyed trying to trying to do physical things to address jealousy address sin address this all those things will only lead to legalism and religion the core motivation behind every one of these things believe me brothers and sisters is self-centeredness self-centeredness the need to see yourself exalted that's why we fight if you don't call me apostle i fight you why because self self wants to be glorified that's why we want titles are we together now seeing then that we are in this world but not of the world there must be a mechanism for us to be able to effectively take advantage of all the tools that have been prepared before us without being contaminated by their effects in our spirit tools such as prosperity tools such as influence are we together now tools such as the anointing all of these are tools but then there must be a foundational build up so that while we engage constantly in this earth using these tools we shield ourselves from the effect that using these things outside of this understanding creates on people so there is something money will do to you if your motivation is wrong are we together now that is dangerous there is something anointing will do to you when your motivation is wrong being prosperous with a self-centered understanding is the recipe for destruction being anointed with a self-centered mentality is a recipe for destruction are we together self let me show you something apostle james was teaching us something and he um, when I when I when I saw it uh, for me it, it, it touched me um, was that that's that not not um, not James help me Holy Spirit second Timothy please give us second Timothy that should be Timothy right second Timothy 3 second Timothy 3 I think I'm right second Timothy 3 please give it to us from verse 1 to 4 it says this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come verse 2 for men shall be what lovers of their are you seeing this now men shall be lovers of their own selves and as a result 
many other things will follow because they are lovers of their own self they will be covetous they will be boasters they will be proud do you understand the context of that scripture now the foundation is lovers of themselves lovers of themselves is not a point it is the reason why these other things will happen because men shall be lovers of them own, their own selves that love for themselves will make them covetous so when they see somebody else's thing they say ah this person does not deserve it it should be mine it should be me are we together then it says boasters proud blasphemers disobedient to parents unthankful ingratitude god you tried but you can do more unholy uh-huh without natural affection truth breakers false accusers look at them incontinent fierce rageful why are you touching my reputation do you not know i am apostle joshua selman lovers of themselves so that aggression is not a family thing this is what is leading to it why you are angry with everybody despisers of those that are good can you imagine that a man can love himself to a point that he despises good people verse 4 traitors heady high minded lovers of pleasure more than lovers of now the key word there is more than the key word is not pleasure the key word is not god the key word is more than more than it's like a meter your love for pleasure gets to a point where it moves beyond its jurisdiction and overrides to a point where your love for god is subject to your love for things your love for cars your love for houses your love for all of this self-centeredness the need the craving to be on the scene the need the craving to be the epicenter of everything the need for recognition the need for honor the need to occupy the position of God listen this is what happened to Lucifer I will ascend to the stars I will be like the most high that was the manifesto of Lucifer and while he said that for the first time God would find somebody in heaven who was not aligned to his purposes it was no longer about the program of God it was Lucifer I will be I'm not interested whether I'm sent on errand I want to be like the most high and he was charged with treason and the Bible says there was war in heaven and Lucifer was judged and was casted down this attitude is best described in the story of the prodigal son listen let me tell you how you know you are self-centered the language of self-centeredness is me myself when when you no longer care the consequences of your pleasure on others and on the kingdom regardless of who suffers it let me get what i want is self-centeredness god is helping someone tonight you are not happy because i'm talking about you and me self-centeredness believe me is the root of sin self-centeredness is the root of these attributes of the flesh that so destroy us they are the weights the bible says we should lay aside but you don't say i will stop jealousy uh -uh. they are effects the cause for that is a life of self-centeredness brothers and sisters look at me is the reason why some of you here looking at me even if you have to kill to make money you will do it why not because you are not a christian something in you listen let me tell you what self-centeredness does it creates an imaginary pressure 
amounts that pressure on you and you keep pushing yourself to do say and be things that are unnecessary because you believe that your sense of worth is tied to those things that's why we do very stupid things self-centeredness is why pastors fight themselves is why business people fight themselves is why a husband and a wife cannot live in peace because they are self-centered everybody brings his idea it has to be my way that's another language of self-centeredness my way it must be my way listen the moment you find yourself whether saying or being driven by these motivations i want to glorify myself my pleasure it must be my way then you know that self-centeredness is eating you up there are people here who think it's just a temperament issue they say it's just my personality type that that is complete nonsense don't let the devil fool you that is that is self-centeredness the core the very control button of evil in your life are we together there are people here you've been trained to have things happen your way if it is not your way to hell with it that motivation has driven us into all sorts of things when when um, we were being taught evangelism in the seminary this is what happened how many of you have heard of something called four spiritual laws one green pamphlet right that's a very good book because from the first page they will show a man's heart in an arrow and then they show a chair inside then they show you sitting there that's exactly that's the clearest description of self-centeredness the god of your own self now let me tell you something the devil is smart he angles self-centeredness so it does not exactly look like you are taking the place of god do you understand it's very subtle so you think i love god i pray when i sin i run to god that's the point you are not running to god because you love him you are running to god because of fear that you think that sin has opened a door for something to happen to you is still you i want to go to heaven is still you it looks spiritual but it's still you are you seeing you are still self-centered that is spiritual and you are mentioning heaven does not mean that it's of god when it is about you are we together so i'm trying to walk in holiness so that i mean i won't do this if this lady waves me i don't even want to look at her face because by doing that god will see me it's still self-centeredness it's just a more religious form of it it's still self-centeredness are we together i'm preparing a nice message and i'm praying in tongues fasting three days dry but the reason is so that everybody who comes for koinonia will know that there is a man of god a, a spiritual form of self the moment it is for you for your glory for your reputation let me tell you i can tell you how self-centered we are because of how much we we fight to make things work in our life you see the way you take the issue of your success too personal as if your name is on the line itself he says for i've been crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ that lives in me are we together watch this if the come sam if this is sam's handkerchief now i love sam with all my heart if this is sam's handkerchief and it falls now i love him and i love the handkerchief but i do not think i will be so distracted to run and come and pick this handkerchief are we together if the falling of the handkerchief becomes so personal that my reputation is tied to it is it really sam's handkerchief it's mine i'm trying to claim it that's what we do with our lives the level to which we are forcing ourselves to make it 
and force ourselves to walk the way we take the issue of our personal success so personal as if our world will crumble the way we guard our name with such fragility is a sign that we are self-centered that level of investment cannot just be for God we are doing it for ourselves thank you okay thank you, sir. are we together When people become overconscious of their reputation, it's self-centeredness. It's self-centeredness. When God began to reveal these things to me, I was amazed. And I said, my God, that means who is free? Who truly is free? I looked at my own life and I said, my God, imagine how many times I've been caught up with these things. Well-meaning, sincere, very sincere you see the key to walking with god is to tremble at his word and be open when you stand before god and foolishly excuse yourself it is still self-centeredness so when the word of god is coming many of us just tap ourselves and like wow i hope they are hearing are you joking this is a message for everybody it's a message you should sit down and have a sober reflection upon look at your life and see the motivation behind the things you are doing and you will see the uncomfortable truth that you have to admit tonight that you have been self-centered absolutely self-centered i know you say it is for him but the truth it is is that you only say it as a cliche but in reality it is for you self-centeredness There are so many things that have happened in the body of Christ that look spiritual and looks as if we are doing it for God. When the scribes and the Pharisees caught the woman in adultery, listen, they were scholars. They were dragging her to Jesus. You would think they were so passionate about Moses and keeping the law. They were looking for a way to destroy the ministry of Jesus. So they did not care who was the scapegoat that be used, that was being used. Let me tell you something about self self-centeredness. Self-centeredness is an expression of wickedness because in an attempt to get your desire, you do not care who suffers and you do not care what goes wrong in the life of anybody. Is the hallmark of self-centeredness. When my desire becomes a passion that whatever suffers in the process whether god or man it's none of my business that's why people kill to get political positions they don't mind they go to a herbalist and he says bring five children and they go and steal the hard end ch children of five families slaughter them while they are slaughtering these children they don't care all they are seeing is the office the apex i tell you that's where it comes from self-centeredness when a man leaves his wife and goes to carry another prostitute and travel is self-centeredness it's not just pleasure it's self-centeredness are we together when somebody bribes in the office and corners billions of naira into his pocket and returns back rejoicing calling himself a rich man it is not just money it is self-centeredness because that somebody's salary in his pocket he does not care that somebody has a wife and children he does not care all he's concerned about is let me get this is it not how we all are how many times have we not paid attention to the effect of our pursuit on the advancement of the kingdom and the well-being of the people oh let me talk to you and I, I say this please don't take this personal but i want to talk to you and 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 do you know do you know sincerely speaking the worst the, the worst victims of this are ladies sisters say amen that's right because of your emotional nature and your cravings to have your desires met i've seen ladies who don't care what goes wrong 
provided they get it if you tell a lie to get the withdrawn money no problem let me just wait if i must corner somebody to buy the iphone 6 iphone 7 whichever one no problem we are more concerned about the arrival of our desires regardless of what suffered for it to arrive that's the apex of self-centeredness have you not seen visitors who come to your house they come to beg rice and you tell them honestly i just have one mudu and you would think they will be sympathetic and say oh i know if it's one mudu it's okay you also say hey, but we, i can still have it you see people like that and at a point you just say okay no problem let me just give you and you give them and they collect they say thank you and they are going <sighs> we are like that we are laughing but that's how we are so says the word of god we are spiritual but he's helping us to rise that's what will make someone come and see someone's food the last meal and just eat it and pour water in the plate and keep it you were hungry but you never believe that someone else may have a desire and as far as your do you know let me tell you something brothers and sisters i have worked among people leadership has opened me up to people there are people whose hearts are bad not because they are bad people themselves the 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 the, the appetite to getting their lost satisfied is very terrible anything that will make it happen let it happen if God will suffer to hell with him are we together yeah so when a pastor sits down and tells people all of you bring five five hundred thousand and does not care that this person is a student and it's not even earning up to 5,000 and says, look, you better use your faith. Bring your 500,000. It looks spiritual and people claim it's for God. It's not for God. When it is for God, you follow God's way. God has a system. Are we together? Yeah. Someone was talking to me, um, I think some weeks ago, and he was just talking about churches and all of that. And then he told me a few things. He was just mentioning different churches and I looked at him I said I want to ask you a question I said why are you talking about these things and he said no 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 it's not like I have any problem I say you do are you kidding me you do because the God you claim to be serving who you are defending so personally is quiet so I wonder why you who is supposed to be his representative is so personal about the issue yes i know the lady wore trousers but why have you taken it so personal it's like a mission you gave yourself are you really sure you are doing that for god okay the lady covered her hair and does not wear trousers what is your own business we do a lot of things that look spiritual but brothers and sisters the foundation of it is self self the need for self so we fight jealousy ladies brothers jealousy whenever you see someone with something nice something in you reacts jealousy self-centeredness it would have been me why should this lady be having this when did she i mean can you imagine this guy wanted to marry her ah come on something is wrong there is a story we must tell the brother self-centeredness how about preachers we love crowds like this. We claim it's for the glory of God. But underlying it is our desires. That's why pastors put pressure on members. They come up with every kind of business schemes to force ministry to work. When you see the way they are putting pressure, this cannot be of God. It's too personal. Why don't you let God take charge of his own kingdom? Anonia is quiet this night myself for me so we go to pray Lord I trust you for a car and let me tell you something <laughs> my God you can spiritualize do you know I love the word because 
Jesus is the word and the Bible says the word can discern the thoughts and the intents of the heart father give me a car for your glory and then he says since it's for my glory walk with my own timing and he said no Lord give me a car now for your glory and God is saying no it's for my glory let me control the timing I say Lord you I force you by sowing a seed give me a car now it's for your glory and God said just remove the for your glory and say give me a car now before I know what to do with you <laughs> we think we think because we are saying for your glory it is spiritual listen let me tell you something brothers and sisters the unrestfulness in our approach to life is a sign that we don't want to fail because our ego is so tied to the failure are you getting that five o'clock people wake up in every city while they are praying jesus i thank you this is a beautiful day what they are saying in the spirit is scapegoat how are you I'm, I'm awake today i hope i can use you today to please achieve my goals amen that's what they thought they did that's what they call devotion to ease the guilt and then they begin their work they do everything that they do and then they come back and say god i don't know why you are not doing this you have to do this and then you will take the glory we, we, we cap our self-centeredness with that statement. Be glorified. Be glorified is not just a statement. Be glorified is a state. Where you no longer are embarrassed about the outcomes of your life. The, the reason why you are responsible over them is not the fear of failure again. It's not the embarrassment. You have, you have, you have, you have died. You have died to your ambitions. It's about him. If koinonia does not work, it's no longer about Joshua Selman's ego to say, I maybe this guy is backsliding. Are you seeing? So the fear of being taught to be backsliding will now drive me to go and fast and pray and buy messages. I will think I am growing spiritually, but it's self-centeredness. That's why some of you came for koinonia this night. I know you love God. But the truth about it is that that's not the reason. Let me tell you how you know we are self-centered. Whenever we do not get our desires, our responses become ugly. Five minutes before your desire, you were trusting that the woman will not die. Lord, I know you. I thank you by your word for your glory. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I am your servant. And then the person, the person dies. And all of a sudden, your ego is on the line. No, 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 no. Let's raise this person back to life. And you try and try and nothing happens. And your ego is on the line. I watch it happen to people. You prophesy to somebody, in the name of Jesus, you are going to get a job. And you see the pressure on you. Men of God prophesy like that and they go back and say, Oh God, please, let this word come to pass. It looks spiritual. It is your word. So you are in such a passion to bring it to pass. So that they can say, Apostle prophesied. And like he said, it came to pass. Is God helping us this night? Are you learning something? Self-centeredness. Brothers and sisters, are you seeing the damage it has caused to us? Sister, are you seeing that this is why, if you are not careful, you may not marry the will of God? Because although in your prayer you are saying, Lord, it's only your will, all that is talk. In reality, you have already painted the picture of the man, the necessary and sufficient condition to say yes to any man. You have painted it. It's unbending. No amount of preaching, no matter how pathetic, will move your mind. The hardness of your heart has been glued to that image. Must be a millionaire. Then you now add and say, and spiritual too just to make you feel so it no longer is about the will of god same thing for people getting jobs listen listen let me tell you don't laugh about this it's a very serious thing do you know why jesus pleased the father it was not because of his miracles it was because he was a walking expression of a body that has been dedicated 
for the will of God to find expression or restraint. Here are the things that Jesus said himself. Let's look at a few scriptures. Jesus himself said this. John 17 verse 1, please. Give it to us media. Let's hurry up. I want us to pray. John 17 verse 1. John 17 verse 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven. Father, the hour is come. Glorify now thy son. Many of us will stop there. And then the next thing we'll add is amen. Glorify now Joshua Selman. Give him money. Give him fame. Give him increase. But Jesus put a comma there and said that thy son may also glorify you. In other words, Lord, it's not necessary to have to use me to prove a point. But simply because I am passionate about seeing your glory revealed, use me as the vehicle for that revelation. Ha! There are things I know that can touch the heart of God. Are we together? There are things I know by my experience with God that touches the heart of God. More than faith, believe me, more than acting out spiritual things is a heart that is completely surrendered to glorify God. Jesus, look at Jesus. Who do being equal with God? Equal with God. I know what Jesus would have prayed at this point. Father, remember that our glory. Make sure you never forget it. I'm only here for three and a half years. I'm coming back. Make no mistakes. No new election in heaven. I am here. My position that I came to become a scapegoat doesn't mean you should take me for granted. I'm calling on you. You better answer me. Jesus submitted himself and said, glorify me so that you will be glorified. Brothers and sisters, this is the language of a life where Christ sits upon the throne of that personality. Do you know this is what Jesus came to give us? There's been a confusion in the body of Christ about Old Testament and New Testament. Let me tell you, if you meet Jesus today, he will never talk to you about Old Testament or New Testament. Whether you are under grace or law is nonsense. He's going to ask you one question. Who is seated at the throne of your heart? Jesus came to deliver us. The very gospel was designed to take us away from a life of self-centeredness. Not from a life of works. No. From a life of self-centeredness. The motivation behind our activities. Being us to a life that is glued to glorifying Christ. Brothers and sisters, I don't care whether you are in the Old Testament or New. You are not born again if Christ is not seated at the throne of your heart. I don't care how many times you have recited salvation prayer. The essence of the coming of Jesus is not just to bring a new order. The essence of the coming of Jesus is to align men back to the purposes of the kingdom where Christ himself will be seated. The Lord gave me a revelation this morning. Both the elder brother of the prodigal son and the younger brother committed the same sin. The only difference was one executed it openly whereas the other one kept it which is an example of the two kinds of believers we have. Both of them were tired of the leadership of their father. One had the courage to express it. One kept it. They wanted ownership. And here's what the first one said. The first one said, give me. That self-centeredness there. Give me. I know you gave me access, but I don't want access. Because the access is in your name. I now want it in my name. Give it to me. The younger, the elder brother did not say give it to me. But it was in his heart. Listen, I'll prove it to you. When the prodigal son returned back. And they were celebrating him. What happened to the elder brother? He became angry. And this is what he said. Father, I have served you all these years. You have not even given me a small, um, you know, a small animal cattle to slaughter for me and my friends. You see the offense? The self-centeredness was still there. In other words, Lord, I have served you. Will you not reward me? See, 
this is the imbalance of the doctrine of covenant that I always balance I've been insulted many times because of this I tell believers in terms of our personal work we are not in a covenant with God it's a relationship it is only when you talk about kingdom advancement and now bring in the operation of the principles of the kingdom then you bring covenant are we together because you see Jesus gave a parable to explain that in the morning he saw some people idle and he called them to go and work in the farm is that true he negotiated money with them that's covenant terms you walk I give you a denary later in the afternoon he saw some people idle and he said why sit us that idle he said no my employers he said go based on relationship they went because they loved him and they believed him there was no arrangement that he was going to pay them even till the 11th hour one hour to close time he still saw somebody he said go now when he started rewarding them see how he rewarded them he started with the covenant people since my agreement with you was one denary take and then he called those who went because they loved him and said since you were in this farm to promote my interest i will now decide what to give you and a person who worked for one hour received the same reward with somebody who started in the morning and the guys were angry they said no something is wrong and he said what you negotiated with me the same way you are saying lord i will serve you in ocean department my husband must come before koinonia ends thank you for that that's a covenant you will get the husband but what if god wanted to give you a husband plus an anointing and a destiny those two you robbed yourself because the motivation listen I know there are times we can tie things to God but brothers and sisters let me tell you the higher you rise with God it no longer matters whether you get results or not it now becomes his glory for your glory I will do anything to behold you as my king One more time for your glory I will do anything just to see to be hold you as my I wanna be where John 4 34 Jesus said this John chapter 4 verse 34 Jesus said my meat is not to build a ministry he didn't say my meat is to prove that I am Savior look at this do you know that every time they challenge Jesus about his his messianic persona did you see the way he was not under pressure to defend himself I know what I would have done, Joshua Selman. Ah, I'll tell media, make a montage and prove to these people, gather all the miracles that have happened and tell them, are you stupid? Is that not the power of God? But, I mean, they met Jesus. The woman was caught in adultery. Jesus would have said, but you guys are foolish. Don't you know that I can do word of knowledge? In fact, the name of the husband, the name of the man that slept with her is Rabbi Benjamin. Where is he come out? And people will clap and say, my God. Hi, Rabbi, you are the one. But Jesus did not see a need for that. He was more concerned about that woman. But he answered them in a dangerous way. Instead of saying, I am the only one qualified to cast stones. He said, he who has no sin, cast the first stone. In other words, whoever among you fits that definition, cast the first stone. All of them left and she was left with the only person who was to cast the stone. He said, since I am qualified, I choose to let you go. Go and sin no more. That's Jesus for you. That's the Jesus we try to preach about that we don't understand. We shout and spit on people trying to preach him. Yet we don't pay attention to understand him. 
are we together the essence of Christianity brothers and sisters is not legalism and religion the essence of Christianity is not even evangelism the essence of Christianity is not heaven the essence of Christianity is not prosperity and money the essence of Christianity is not ministry and healing the essence of Christianity is a life through the ministry of the Holy Spirit replaced from a life of self-centeredness to a life that is absolutely committed to seeing Christ enthroned first in your life and throughout every territory regardless of what your own achievement is while you do that is nonsense it's only secondary listen when you get this thing I'm telling you you will see the power of God in your life I can tell you this is why many people are not anointed I've said it the key to the anointing is not just fasting and prayer I've seen people fast for hundreds of days you fast with yourself at the center of your heart you have only succeeded in doing a good weight loss program I assure you you are not going to touch the anointing a heart that is dedicated to seeing his glory come okay Lord this is the lady I want to marry you. I like her. But thy will. Everybody say thy will. Be done. Say thy will. This is the language of a Christ-centered life. Lord, I want to go to London. It's always been my desire. However, I realize that my life is not my own. The Bible says I've been bought with a price. You don't act as if Jesus didn't finish paying for you. He paid for you completely in fact whether you are born again or not you are still his property the earth is the Lord's and the fullness therein right so whether through sovereign ownership or through the manifestation of the love of his son you still belong to him listen to what Jesus said my meat this is what moves my life my nourishment my satisfaction is to do the will of who him that sent me and to finish it i am more concerned about doing the will than enjoying any blessing that comes while doing the will so if in the course of doing the will of god i operate certain principles and i enjoy blessings while i'm wearing the nice suit while i'm driving the nice car my gaze is set on seeing him glorified so prosperity no longer has the power to distract me because i met it on my way to pleasing god whether or not i met it i am determined to still finish pleasing him so paul says what then shall separate us from the love of god look at this the apostle who brought himself back to life they killed paul immediately they went he came back to life and shook himself my god a man who wrote two thirds of the gospel this is what he said for for me to live is christ i don't know for you but for me to live is christ then even if i die listen paul was not saying if i die as a result of armed robbery and they shoot me if you die as a result of armed robbery it's not gain it's a loss because one you are going to hell number two the kingdom is not advanced through that but that paul was trying to say look my passion is to pour myself as a drink offering and regardless of what personal results come to me or otherwise it is secondary so compared to the fulfillment of God's program your marriage is secondary that marriage that has topped the prayer list of miracle service every week and then later the number 27 is now God your will be done exclamation mark after you have written everything and vented out your lust he sees he looks from heaven the holy spirit sees our motivations while we pray he's watching us while we do the things that we try to do he's watching us while we gossip about people you would think it's because of a passion to see them improve it's simply a system to show a weakness in them so that you can justify your own that you are not willing to hand over to the cross let me tell you if you want to love God 
you will love me for what I'm teaching you this night. It's the key to make spiritual men. A life that is completely out. And you see, some of us, we come from cultures that the system of the culture by default makes you self-centered. Are we together? We come from cultures where the system of the culture by default was designed to make you self-centered. They look at you and say, promise, how old are you? And you say, uh, uh, maybe I'm, 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 I'm 32, or I'm 30, or I'm 35. And they say, ah, you should have a car by now. Ah, what are you saying? You should have a car and have a five children and this. And then that challenges you. And you go back and say, Lord, they are insulting you. God said, they are not insulting me. If they are insulting me, I will react. I'm not offended. I said, God, me, I'm offended. I'm serving you. <laughs> you see, we create all kinds of theological messages. Let me tell you. If he's the one taking the glory, why are you taking the shame? Listen, whoever is taking the glory should be the person taking the shame. Please help me. Why do you claim God is taking the glory but you always take the shame? Are we together? Take it high for me, David. See how we pack the shame and we claim that we are giving God the glory. We are not. There's a song in my spirit. And the shout of the earth will be your praise. God forever and the light unto all will be your wonderful name. All the glory, Lord, is yours. God forever, all the glory is yours. Listen, Lord Jesus, if I remain barren like this, I give you praise. I will never stop serving you, but it is your reputation. So let the pressure go to him. Are we together? The moment people look at you and say, are you a woman or a man? Direct the shame to him. But you sit down and absorb the shame and say, God, give me a man child or I die. And God says, this thing you are doing is not for my glory. It's spiritual. You are sincere. I'll show you why many people never get rich. They think the key is doing business. They think the key is after all of these things, God looks at your heart and says, no, sir. You are better off without it than you are with it because when it comes to your heart it will possess you and tear you so you see that it's not all about imparting anointing apostle I'm not seeing crowds in my ministry I know if you speak a word the doors will open and here I'm, I'm just looking at you in your sincerity but you dared your fellowship members that you are coming to collect power like a charm and say watch me when I come back you will see what will happen to this church your self-centeredness drove you for hours on the road sweating and praying feeling spiritual and you could not wait to see me the moment you receive that anointing whether or not you thought you received it you were in a hurry and you say from today don't play with me anyhow apostle laid hands on me see the picture aren't you surprised at what you call the sudden change when people get results they never change suddenly they only manifested it I told you the prodigal son did the same thing with the elder brother we keep I used to accuse the, the younger one and leave the elder brother but I found that two of them were only different versions of the same thing one was quiet with his own while the other one executed it hallelujah Luke chapter 22, verse 42. We are going to pray. I like us to read it. This was Jesus at Gethsemane. Listen, listen, listen. There are two things here that we must understand. We are going to read it. But the first thing you need to understand is Jesus had his own will. It is okay to have your will. It is okay to have your desires. Only that your desires must come under divine scrutiny. And if need be, give way for the will of God to prevail. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Yeah. Your desires are only worthy of execution 
when they find themselves in harmony with the divine will of God if at any point your desires no matter how intelligently constructed if there is a difference from your desires and God's desires one must bow and for many of us largely it's been God's desires bowing so salary leads you to the job are we together you look at the lady and say Kai I like the way this lady speaks don't you think she'll be a nice wife you see let me tell you something brothers let me give you a frank advice if you keep being carnally minded I give you two guarantees guarantee number one you will miss out on the will of God two you are going to pay for your foolishness when it has to do with marriage you have to take your eyes away from carnality and focus on God I saw that lady if you go eight be careful be very very careful I know what I'm saying doesn't make sense to many of us but you ask many people who are sadly regretting missing the will of God there is no price that is too great to walk in the will of God father if thou be willing remove this cup from me here's the language of spiritual Find expression in our lives. Nevertheless, not my will. I have a will. I have a desire. But nevertheless, not my will. Lord, your will be done. According to my desire, I plan to own a house in every state in Nigeria. But Lord, I bring that will to your scrutiny. Does this fit in the master plan of your blueprint for my life? And if at any point it's not part of it, I drop my ego. I drop my ego. These are men and women who will be used by God in this end time. Let me tell you, those who will be used in this end time are not just those who understand revelations and mysteries. Because the Bible says knowledge will cease, prophecy will cease. Those who will carry strange mantles in this season are men and women who God can obstruct their life at any point without having no need to explain it. There are too many of us who put God like a defense. Lord, tell me why I should leave Zaria now. And we put our hands in our pocket. I'm waiting for you. And then you have to come and God says, all right, uh, take it easy. The reason is because... I have seen something I, said, I don't understand clarify when you make God that slow to birth his purposes through you there are dimensions he will never enter and the spirit drove Jesus he didn't say Jesus are you in harmony with me let's go to the wilderness you are going to get power there if you want God to explain to you the reason why he's doing everything in your life your life will be too slow for impact you have to start moving and let your mind catch up and say lord your thoughts towards me are thoughts of good and not of evil i don't have to wait until i understand you are too good to destroy me mm. you are too good to destroy me so whether you are in the valley of the shadow of death rather than sitting down and, and just talking and say god you serve kai if i were an unbeliever by now i would have done something God, do you know it's because I'm a Christian that I'm here? It's not like I don't know where Babalao is. All those stupid statements that we make when we are under fire is a sign that the fire is roasting our self-centeredness. That's why the Bible says when we walk through the fire, you won't rush it. It has to burn off that dross so that when you come out like gold, the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God five years after marriage no child and people come and you know people are so naughty they can say something and say ah, madam you are serving god what is all this one at least go go for koinonia now eh? 
apostle is anointed he can, is it pride what is stopping you and then after listening to those things you can go back and cry and say oh god give me a child or i die no you say father a child or no child let me tell you one truth me and you we are stuck to air forever a child is too small a reason for me to put my relationship with you on the line how many people have seen carry over and left god they say what, what is the use the day i served god i failed when i didn't serve god i succeeded and you hear preachers stand on stage and preach nonsense nonsense is that all your life is about why do you compare your relationship with god with academics is it ever a match why do you compare your relationship with god with marriage why do you compare your relationship with god with a job is is our self-centered mundane pursuit that reduce god to be equal with these things god will never i cannot reduce god to the issues of my life the petty issues of my life and say god you are uh, uh, me ask him ask him you are spiritual people will i ever open my mouth and tell god he's not faithful why that what happened just because there was no tea to eat you to tea to drink and bread to eat you carry the bible and run around heaven oh god are you giving me tea or i should tear my bible is this your word and god says now nah, well, what is all this one just because of tea you are shouting self-centeredness this is why the anointing does not work in the life of people this is why god does not lift certain people inside outside online you are hearing me and the lord is speaking to you can your will bend to the will of god look at me if your will cannot bend to the will of god you are carnal it's not an insult it's a description you are carnal and self-centered let me tell you how you know your will has bent to the will of god when sacrifice no longer becomes an issue in your life if god says joshua selman remove the sim in your phone now and give somebody this phone i don't say oh god see let's be real me i'm trying let me, I, I want to show you why many of us are carnal the ease with which you release things is a measure of how much you are self-centered and i'm not talking of small things your turn singlet god says give you say, ah, after all i was going to even burn it so let me give this guy that's not giving god will never ask you to give what they gave you he will ask you to give what you worked for he's very smart if he says if he, he look let me tell you something this our god is powerful he will allow your emotions to be connected with the gift then he will ask you to release it god will never ask you to release what you are not emotionally connected to because it doesn't make sense the essence is not the giving the essence is your heart giving him space to find expression when satan comes to you he studies the things that have not been surrendered to god that becomes his weapon of mass destruction in your life hallelujah let me tell you something i stand before the god of heaven and i lie not if the lord asks me now and say son let this be your last sermon as joshua selman in the name of jesus christ the resurrected lord i'm standing before him i will not lie to you when i drop this mic no committee council meeting will make me pick a mic again to preach I'll cry because I have a lot of passion for this but I love him more than that if you like carry placard bring back apostle move around with it and say no you must come back the demon that manipulated your mind you must come back I say I understand you are human if I were you I would do the same thing but I'm not going back again let me tell you brothers and sisters listen I have laid down things in my life you will not believe it's a price some of us finances whenever money is leaving you even if you are keeping it i don't mean you are giving it just that you are keep is not in your pocket you feel the pain just that is somewhere aside from your pocket that is the apex of carnality 
materialism and self-centeredness join together God does not want your money what does he do with it God does not want your clothes he wants your heart because when he finds your heart he finds everything sisters let me tell you why some of you are not rising at the pace you want your life is full of so much carnality it's not an insult you love God but the truth about it is there are many shrines and idols in your heart you have surrounded them so much you would dare not even allow the voice of God interrupt anything Lord don't come and interrupt my program I have my life all planned out same thing with the brothers that's why people are confused in Nigeria they don't know what to do with their lives they claim they are hearing God they claim they are walking with God but their lives are very clear that they are moved by insecurities and sociological pressures to show they are successful are we together the quest to buy a car the quest to get married the quest to have children you have all girls and somebody is asking you ah kilo day we need girls and boys so, and you now turn and land the warning on your wife say madam you had that thing please i'm tired of this embarrassment oh yeah let's pray lord give us a child for your glory no give us a child for my ego my masculinity is being insulted and i want to use you to cure it and god says no way i'm not that cheap brothers and sisters this night i want you to come to a place where the anthem of your life is nevertheless not my will but your will be done you find peace in your life i like job job lost everything in his life as if that were not enough you can lose any other thing if you have your health you are okay he lost his health dogs would come and lick the source of job do you know what that means imagine seeing aliko dangote on the streets of zaria and these dogs that roam around licking him and then his wife standing by him with a dark dirty wrapper and people look and say job you where were the friends you helped and job sat down there and the wife was so attached to her reputation and she said job curse god and die and job said uh -uh, uh -uh. though he slay me though he slay me i know i've been embarrassed my ego has been stung till there's no ego yet will i trust him all the days of my appointed time i will wait until my change comes the three hebrew boys said oh king let it be known unto you that our god will deliver us we know that there is a provision in him to deliver us however even if aha uh -huh, your faith equation does not call that one you call even if doubt yeah! nothing my husband must come december lord i tell you i've sown seed i am even taking communion please don't give god a headache with all these stories save yourself all that immaturity say lord i give you praise i'm showing you the secret to peace there are men and women who have found peace you see them rejoicing and they are happy because they have found a system in god that it is more beneficial for him to be glorified than for your agenda to find expression it's not about the crowd it's about his kingdom it's not about joshua selman it's about his kingdom i bring you the message that represents the epicenter of the gospel that has been misunderstood even by preachers who preach the new testament what they preach in the new, in the new testament is they say okay now there's no more works jesus has done everything enjoy that's complete nonsense it's an incomplete truth the key is he brought you to a state where you no longer are self-centered the motivation behind everything you do is now for his glory there's nothing that gives my life joy as that name be that word be glorified lord be glorified it's my statement every time when i pray all i tell him is be glorified be glorified preparing for miracle service lord i thank you i love you with all my heart your people are coming they are trusting that you will use me and lord i thank you be glorified every time i stand on this stage and i look at you believe me 
I have no business trying to impress anybody. His glory. His glory. That's why I do the things that I do. We just rounded up our external ministration for the year and it's been a busy year. Sometimes while we are traveling, when we are on transit, I just sit down. The last meeting was last week and we had to leave, I think, 4.30 in the morning to catch up with our flights to Lagos. And while we were going in the night, I was saying, what is all this? Why am I risking my life like this? I didn't sleep. I wanted to rest my head and the next thing it was time. And I had to, what am I looking for? Ministry? Am I so dull that I cannot write a book? Can't I do a webinar? Are there not intelligent ways to make myself omnipresent? The internet has helped to make omnipresence possible. I can be everywhere. So what, what the heck is all this traveling around? And all of a sudden, you just remember for his glory. For your glory. I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my King. For your glory, I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as I want to be where you are. I gotta be where you are. I want to be where you are. Listen, let me preach to you this night. Some of you, the load you are carrying is a demon that put it on your head. That load is not from God. The Bible says, My yoke is easy and my burden is light your life is surrounded by too many self-inflicted worries worries that make no sense at the foundation of those worries is your self-centeredness and your desire to solve those problems for the sake of your ego but i bring you a message here's what jesus said come on to me it didn't say discuss with me come on to me all ye that are heavy laden and are weary he says and i will give you rest i will give you rest the worry in your life is killing you sister the worry in your life is killing you there are some of us who are older than our age they look at you and they say how old are you let me guess uh, 37 say me i'm just 25 what, what made that? Worry added an age that was not given by God. You see people worry all the time. They get up in the morning, they are worried. Ah, the Bible says, which of you by worry can add one cubit? This is scripture. You know, honestly speaking, sometimes when, when, when I drive around the road or when I stand, I start laughing in the car. I'm just laughing because I'm saying, my God, what made people like this? How did people suddenly become like this? You see a man quarreling somebody, a conductor insisting that that five naira must be given, and the person is refusing. And then you stand somewhere, someone is stealing, they are catching him. Someone is cheating somebody in the market. A lady is frowning her way to the market, and you look at this and say, My God, who programmed us like this? Because when you die, all these things end. Right now, as I'm speaking, an arm robber is trying to fly a fence, he may die this night. But he's thinking, they are already calculating. When you do this, we will steal this one, then we'll run out. He may die this night. That's his mindset. When Jesus says, I will give you rest, believe it. There is a pastor right now who is not sleeping. He's under pressure. The messages I'm preaching, are they new or are they still? Does it look like I'm growing? Pressure. How can we multiply the members? I already prophesied that we're going to have three times. And now it's almost December. We need like 1,000 more people. How can we do that? Your ego on the line. Forcing you to wake your leaders in the night. In the name of leaders meeting. But it's simply your ego on the line. Please rest. Prophesy to someone close to you. Say rest. Say it, rest. I bring you a system in the kingdom. Where men can hand over these self-inflicted problems.
Look at this. Come, sir. If this guy is an armed robber, watch this. This is an example. If he's an armed robber and you catch him stealing, now I'm the policeman and I'm about, about to shoot him. Are we together? The moment I shoot this guy and he falls to the ground, is that an armed robber again? That's not an armed robber. Are you seeing? That's an innocent body that was controlled by nonsense for many years. And understanding made that body jump a fence by force. Something else can come into that body and that body suddenly becomes a pastor. It was never the body. The body did not jump on the fence by itself. A self-centered nature of wanting to be like the young guys too. We are like the young guys, the ones that have, you see, you see, there's this craze among young people, the ones who have made it. Let me see the designer you are wearing, the watch, how much? Hundred and how many thousand? The, is, are you wearing Versace or this? And the other person said, Kai, you see, I'm tired of all this tailor, tailor thing. This guy that is sewing something, suit is bending around, I need to start dressing well. And we put ourselves under pressure. That's what some of you are doing now. You promise yourself to wear a particular weave before Christmas. It's unnecessary. That money can pay your rent, your small house that you are, you are paying. Unnecessary things. Listen, please, I want you to write this down. The only thing that is worth your blood, the only thing that is worth your blood, listen to me, is your relationship with Jesus and if you are married, your marriage write it down these are the only two things in this life that is worth your blood worth you waking up to not sleep the only thing that is worth your blood is your relationship with jesus and if you are married your marriage two things they are the only things that the bible places so much priority onto even unto death Are we together? I think it was last week or the week before last. I sang a song. I will sing it again. When it's all been said and done, all my treasures will mean nothing. Only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time Lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find pure as gold in married clay turning sinners into saints and I will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life brothers learn this don't be foolish husbands 10 years from now don't join the confusion of men who are punishing their wives and their children my ego my this all this nonsense that wrinkles men to death high blood pressure killing men they die of high blood pressure and what brought the high blood pressure is never solved oh i would never be that foolish never be that foolish <laughs> Ubangi chika isaya po na kima sunanka. Ubangi chika. This is what I'll do with my life. Ni na doka ka sunanka. Ubangi chika isaya po na kima sunanka. Ubangi chika. This is the part of the song that I really like. We'll raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We'll sing in honor of you. That's the reason why we are alive. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We'll shine your light so bright. We'll sing in honor of you. 
prophesy one minute to yourself and say i reject worry say it i reject it no you came with culture but i reject you i reject self-centeredness i hand over the management of my life to the king of kings and the lord of lords whatever god cannot do cannot be done no whatever god cannot do let no man fool you that it can be done Listen, listen, come. If God does not give you a wife, if you like wear suit, speak English, you can choose nonsense for yourself. The depression you are having going online wanting to like every lady capturing people's pictures on your phone is nonsense that self-centeredness on rampage hand over that rubbish to god and rest if god does not give you a husband cat walk jump pray in tongues cook you will never marry until he gives it a man can have nothing except it is given unto you if God does not open access to wealth, do business, buy, sell, sell cement, sell sand, do anything. I assure you, you will never have this thing. In the kingdom, it's not an achievement, it's a trust. He said, my son, give me your heart. God does not anoint you, try to start a ministry. You will be shocked that you are preaching well, yet nobody will come because it has not been given. Everything in the kingdom is given until it is released from heaven you will never have it Hi. the worry of men is killing them listen listen because of the healing ministry i study a lot about health do you know i have found out i'm not a doctor we have doctors here but most of the disease what we call it disease people put themselves in an atmosphere that destroys them i tell you i have come to the conclusion that aside from demonic influences all sicknesses all sicknesses are psychologically related depression when will you come and build a house in the village and you are under pressure you have one million naira that you would have used to plan your life but somebody has stimulated your egocentric nature and you go to the village you start building and die there have you ever gone to uk no 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 no. and you are putting yourself under pressure selling your car selling your wife selling your children to get the tp to go to uk and live like a fool at the borders go and see nigerians abroad see them under bridges when a student is here in nigeria and he's working they tell him no concentrate but when he goes abroad he can be scrubbing toilet and be schooling they say it's all right our carnal nature producing this nonsense we see in society let it change tonight please it's like a it's like something spinning men the moment you are born you enter into it it starts spinning you till death you can come out of it and you will be amazed at how people have been killing themselves by themselves i live a very happy life i'm telling you i live a very happy life when people look at me and say apostle the burden of the ministry i say me burden of the ministry you are joking i can be tired though physically speaking but maybe fatigued like frustration from ministry never anybody who tells you i'm ever frustrated in my life go and tell that person is a liar from the pit of hell i am a very very happy person whatever i don't have i keep it when koinonia started here miracle service I, I will wear a suit that can buy a bike and climb the bike are we together i will climb the bike and it will come and there will be overflow of people here i will drop from the bike and people are watching ah this apostle on a bike i mean i don't have to sit down and tell myself i know how many times a jimmy can be a witness i went to go and buy a car and god said leave this place there was a time i finished the arrangement can you imagine that embarrassment standing you are happy you are smiling about to call your people and saying i'm making it and god said what are you doing here 
your ego will not allow you to leave you say no way god collect it i will buy and you buy it and it never gives you joy when you insist on taking what god did not give you he will take back something he gave you write it down when you insist on taking what god did not give you believe me he will take back something he gave you we raise your banner high we shine your light so bright we sing in honor of you lord i will raise your banner high i shine your light so bright i sing in honor of you you know you know my people have learned a lot of things working with me because they travel do you know there are times we've gotten to the airport we just get to the airport and because we arrived late we've missed our flight they have they have learned this that i don't worry if someone calls me now and says apostle your house is on fire your car is on fire everything is on fire your bank is on fire i will tell them let me finish koinonia when i finish i look at it i say okay so what bond there's nothing we can recover glory be to god i give you praise do you know what i'm going to do i'll go back and i'll sleep to wake up and say ah my life <laughs> no i've grown up you know what we say let's say okay in house it'll never happen never happen i'm giving you the secret of rest some of you are surprised is it really true because it is never a reality you have come to conceive in your mind you are already you have acclimatized yourself to worry you never believe that there can be such a reality it is your ego self-centeredness self-centeredness please please hear me hand over your life to god I, i'm not i don't mean born again you keep hearing me say this I, handing your life to God is not reciting salvation prayer no coming to a point where you relinquish ownership Lord it belongs to you nevertheless not my will but thy will be done nevertheless not my plans but your plan be done nevertheless not my desires but your desires i know the bible says he will give us the desires of our hearts but brothers and sisters he will only give you the desire that is consistent with his will so you don't coin a desire by yourself and start imposing god using scriptures like a charm to turn his hand no the desire must be consistent with his will lord do whatever you want to do with my life it's yours it truly is yours I've told him this many times koinonia belongs to him you can call me anything you want to call me it's never my ministry i don't have the power to run a ministry it belongs to him that's why he spreads it the way he wants and does with it things that are even more than my frame of wisdom i imagine how depressed i would have been if i were doing ministry by myself and in my strength i live a very happy life most times when we travel for meetings they don't even know who apostle is as soon as we drop most times i'm in my polo with my earphones listening to something and they walk to mike and say good afternoon sir and then they turn to victor good afternoon and then they just see me and i can see the shock this is the thing we have been waiting for for hours at the airport there is this treasure in earthen vessels it gives me joy listen it gives me joy when i decrease because the more i decrease my problems decrease the more I decrease, my worry decreases. Whoever is the landlord is the one who renovates the house. I, I mean, let him, let him handle everything. He's not in me as a tenant. He's in me as a landlord. I give you the secret of peace. Quit the life of self-centeredness. Finances, all of this. I, I'm trying to do this. Keep your ego on the line. If you ever seek prosperity, let it be because you desire for his kingdom to come and mean it seriously and show it by how your current resources are advancing his kingdom. If your 10 naira does not advance his kingdom, your 1 billion will not advance his kingdom. One gentleman came and met me and he said that, um, that he wanted to be 
to, me to pray for him he's a kingdom financier i said really he said by god's grace he wants to be giving maybe like 100 100 million to like 10 different ministries every month i said wow that's great and this guy came to my place he didn't even buy orange of 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 50 naira i i, I told him i said you will not be a kingdom financier as you can see that, that i am not looking for this but if you don't have the sense i am god's servant you believe i'm god's servant and you cannot buy orange of 50 naira right i see the shoe you are wearing i see everything you are wearing you come and you are twisting your tongue for hours telling me you want to sow 100 million your heart is not giving there's no giver in your heart so you're not going to give you're only a liar and the money will kill you if you even get it sir, it's not even, you will not get it at best you will just be comfortable god is not a fool you can choose your way and die with it but his way do you know as i'm preaching to you now when we begin to pray some of you will find out that certain sicknesses will just leave you because the foundation of you've taken panadol you've taken injection it has not left because the spirit that sponsors that thing is sitting on a mindset that is comfortable you hand over your life to god that's all absolutely that's all every time people ask you things you don't know the answer just tell them god be glorified god be praised Ha, when will you buy a car now you are getting too old for my liking we give god the praise god is going to step in just diplomatically laugh and leave them your mother calls you and say don't come back home if there's no if, if there's nobody you are going to introduce uh -uh. my child are you cursed what is wrong i am your mother oh yeah i bless you go and bring a husband mommy the lord be glorified simple you enter your room and dance it away and dance it and let satan see you rejoicing Huh? You are you are a graduate. You are you are masters. You even have PhD. No job. What is wrong with you? This other guy is a smoker and he's working in NMPC. You claim to love God, huh? and even I mean you cannot even get a job anywhere. Jesus, be praised, be glorified. Not in the name of Jesus. I will go about what kind of I'm tired of unbelievers mocking me. Let them mock. If you take the shame, what are you doing with the glory? He cannot take the glory and give you the shame. Whoever takes the shame should also take the glory. Rise up on your feet. Take over. Take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over. Take over. I have touched the end of myself hallelujah hallelujah i have come to the end of myself hallelujah hallelujah i have come to sing it from the depth of your heart hey, hey, take over take over i have come to the end of myself Take over, take over. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Prayer point number one, Lord. Take away this load from my life. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Take it away. This unnecessary pressure to prove a point. This unnecessary pressure is making me greedy. Is making me covetous. Take it away from my life. I pray, Lord, take this load. It's depressing me. I can't sleep because of it. I cry alone in the night because of it. I hand over everything to you. Up 
Makata la bakora te se da la da la la. Mabro to so te ke te ba da da la la la. Pray, pray your way to freedom. Pray your way to liberty. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Listen. You are going to wage warfare in the next two minutes against all the traits that your self centeredness has produced. Listen. Some of you have bitter jealousy. You love God, but if you ever see something that is not in you, you, you get resentful. Covetousness. High mindedness. You crave for recognition. You will claim you don't, but it's written all over your life. Your appetite for recognition is to a fault. You may not directly go to look for it, but when they bring it the way you jump at it, shows you desire it. Are we together? What of lost? Lost. Your appetite for lost has driven you beyond imagination appetite for vain glory I am pastor this not brother this self-centeredness what of your desire to outshine others ladies you always want to be seen as a happening person it's a spirit you pride yourself in outshining others what of pastors the competitive jealousy that moves around men of God everybody trying to tear down another to show he is standing is self-centeredness what of all the religious activities done to command respect not just to glorify God prayers fasting look serious but motivated behind it is the desire for a name listen listen Nimrod Kush said go to come let us build a city whose top will reach the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves the issue was not the city the issue was the name everywhere the spirit of the antichrist manifested is sought self-recognition i'd like you to pray mention those attitudes mention those attributes and let them die in your life lift your voice don't be arrogant. Don't claim there's nothing to pray for. Selfishness. Lord, deliver me. Pray. Open your mouth and pray. Jesus, deliver me from lust. Deliver me from pride. I have a bitter and a wicked heart deliver me from it i don't rejoice at the progress of others deliver me from it i'm so obsessed by my desires i don't care who gets hurt on the way deliver me oh god are you praying i have paid less attention to the needs of people it's always been about me my opinion my desire what i want are you praying hallelujah listen you are going to pray for supernatural compassion that listen beyond your desires you pay attention to the effect of your desires on the kingdom and on people don't want something so bad you don't care who dies listen listen 
don't go to people's houses and inconvenience them and not care whether they are being inconvenienced provided your desires are met you must have a sense of empathy you don't go to a house their resources are about finishing and you don't even have the spirituality to say no even when they offer you some things there are some things the answer is no yes cannot be the answer to everything are you hearing what i'm saying you must sustain the discipline it cannot be give me give me your hand is always open to collect there are times do you know do you know there are certain homes that sometimes i'm not saying this is the general reason but there are times i deliberately will not want to go do you know why especially some of our parents and loved ones i will not go because i know how much they honor me and sometimes they can be constrained financially are we together and i know that attempting to go there they will go out of their way maybe even borrow money to try to put things in place and i say no 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 or sometimes i take them unawares and i insist that they don't give anything maybe a cup of water just to bless the house but some of you i know that if you are functioning in this grace people will lock their houses when they see you because you will inconvenience people how many millionaires in many churches cannot testify because the day they just testify i paid a tithe of one million the pastor says see me after service the other office not the regular one and that man never rests text message all the time we need chairs in this church is god speaking to you let me know if he's talking all kinds of pressures the discipline to have empathy for people don't want something so bad you enter a room you want to cook your food you pour water on people's bed that's it the room you are self-centered you are more concerned about your stomach you don't care what happens to any other person there are husbands like that they never pray they never do anything the day they are going to pursue them from the office they organize night vigil everybody is seated at home peacefully the next thing you see one man of god who just enter like a thief and start singing around and he'll call everybody and nobody will sleep that night because the man has a problem but when somebody is about to die and they say ah oh, my husband let's pray say no 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 that's their business our society is full of self-centeredness that's why many husbands never enjoy their homes they claim they have experience in marriage but their self-centeredness destroys them many wives same thing many children same thing self-centeredness fools the society i like you to pray and say lord give me compassion to study the effect of my passion on others to make sure that i not only receive results but that i don't damage the destinies of people in a bid to get my desires lift your voice and pray empathy of the feeling of others the bible says for we do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity hallelujah listen there are some of you after this meeting you are supposed to send text messages to certain people and tell them i'm so sorry i never realized that my desire has been hurting you so bad there are people you are supposed to send them text messages are we together yeah so bad they make their bed you bring your friends and scatter their bed and you stand up and walk away you are so conscious about your desire you don't care about the feeling of anybody to hell with anything there are others your relationship too many people have suffered because of your own relationship you carry your wife or your husband to be to a house loot their food eat everything i mean come on there are others is their job don't let anything you have intentionally cause trouble and break people down it's not worth it 
when the election Nigeria's election and the president now won Jonathan did something I'm not a politician but he did something that touched my heart there were so many prophecies that had come that he will win from men of God who had had credible track records and the moment that happened he would have put his ego on the line and shed the blood of millions of Nigerians but he said no his aspiration is not worth the blood of Nigerians and he declined that for me is no matter what went wrong in his government that I seen on the cake has made him a man of honor and an international elder statesman the model of his concession is what is being used in many African nations right now leaders who otherwise would not concede and receive def defeat his life has become a template that's what happened when you create a sense of empathy don't say I want the shoe so bad if I must steal I will steal I want the phone so bad if I must remove the phone of the seam of my roommate to just ask please grow up don't put people in trouble because of your desires it's too selfish one more time you are going to pray and say Lord help me I'm tired of self-centeredness now my eyes have been opened and I'm seeing how much because of my life so many people's destinies are almost been destroyed my gossiping around to explain myself has caused pain to all, too many people from today I receive grace to shut my mouth my blood mail has destroyed too many people I have joined the hands of the heads of good friends I have caused trouble for too many people it's not worth it I'm a child of God stony heart put a heart of flesh listen two prayer points and we're done the next prayer point you are going to pray and say Lord let nothing aside from my relationship with you ever be a do or die in my affair in my life again let, let I will be responsible within the limits of responsibility but Lord I declare that aside from my relationship with you and my marriage let nothing be a do or die affair in my life again to make me almost want to destroy myself to get it lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray believe me when I tell you nothing aside from the purposes of God is a do or die affair you will kill yourself for nothing Hallelujah. Let's round up. Matthew chapter 6, please. From verse 9. Matthew chapter 6, please. From verse 9. We are reading down to 13. Keep standing if you can. We are rounding up already. Let me teach you something you may have never seen. After this manner, Jesus is teaching us how to communicate with heaven. Jesus is teaching us how to have an addiction for the things of God. And this is what he says. After this manner, therefore, in this pattern, pray. Pray with this order of priority. Number one, our Father which art in heaven. Priority number two, I reverence you. In the eyes of Jesus, your reverence for God is more important than the forgiveness of your sins. Look at it. After this man, I pray. Hmm. Jesus is teaching here. Hallowed be your name. 
that is the foundation for everything that I do I want to reverence you that is the reason why I will not go and smoke it's not just because I'm running away from hell no I desire that you be lifted hallowed be your name next verse your purposes are you seeing now this is your prayer the moment you reference the father the next priority is anything that will move his purposes look at this i hallow your name and i desire your kingdom to come your influence and that desire is only achieved when your will is done in the earth so he focuses on the will of god is that how you pray no your needs that's what you drum heaven with you sing one or two praise and worship songs for two minutes and yell at heaven but he's teaching us how to pray your kingdom come this is what i want next verse so that your kingdom can come effectively give us our daily bread the reason why i need daily bread is not because i'm hungry the reason why i need daily bread is because it's part of the tools that will empower me towards your kingdom coming i need to eat i need supplies in my life i need the millions and the billions so that i can be comfortable and create the atmosphere for your kingdom to come on that wise give us this day our bread next verse because i want your kingdom to come and i know that you are a holy god that my sinful nature can act as a separation between me and you forgive me our debts as i forgive others so the reason why i am asking forgiveness is not just because i want to run to heaven the reason why i am asking for forgiveness is because i dis i love him so much i do not i want to clear everything away that can stop his name from being hallowed and stop his kingdom from coming are we together 13 and lead me not into temptation give me discernment not so that i will be called apostle joshua selman give me discernment because if you lead me into temptation and my life is destroyed i will not participate in your kingdom coming and deliver me from evil there is a wicked devil there are curses and yokes there are witches and wizards there are covenants that are out to destroy lives lord i desire your kingdom to come but i'm also aware of these things so deliver me from evil and the summary of that prayer a reiteration for thine is the kingdom every power that is communicated is the power that comes for that kingdom and thy glory forever amen he said pray in this manner and your prayer will be answered when was the last time you prayed like that god give me a husband why god give me a wife why god give me a job why god wipe my tears why don't ask me that question god give me your word says so if you don't do it except you are not god and you say ah that's not a correct statement i'm god all by myself there is nothing i ever ask god that the purposes of the kingdom is not tied to it if the purposes of the kingdom is not tied to it it is useless simple it is completely useless we're rounding up from beginning to the end it will always be always be you jesus oh jesus nothing else matters nothing in this world will do for jesus you're the center and everything revolves around you jesus so from my heart to the heavens jesus be the center it's all about you yes it's all about you from my heart to the heavens it's all about you Jesus, be praised.
praised. Jesus, be lifted. Just lift your hands and really, really worship him in the name of you. Lord, we exalt you intentionally. We glorify you intentionally. We decree and declare that your name alone be praised for the wonders, for the miracles, mighty works by your spirit. Thank you. Hallelujah. Two prayer points before we sit down. Prayer point number one, Lord, everything that makes me disbelieve you, I crush it tonight. In the name of Jesus, lift your voice and pray. I challenge the spirit of unbelief. I challenge the spirit of unbelief. I challenge the spirit of unbelief. Lift your voice and pray. Sabarato Kopashi. I challenge the spirit of unbelief. You are a spirit. I call you by name and I challenge you. The spirit of unbelief. Are you praying? Please participate in the prayer. I challenge the spirit of unbelief. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Lord, grant me access to light and illumination tonight. Lift up your voice and pray. Please pray. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Seko to parato kashabra dagada balada bakasabra ndege balata box. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Illumination by the power of your Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Welcome everyone. These two prayer points are very important prayer points that I don't want us to trivialize the spirit of unbelief and access to light. Hallelujah. We've been on a series and um, we started last week. We hopefully we'll end it today. As we set the pace to wrap up the year, I really want your heart to be open. You see, let me tell you something. When you keep wallowing around the things of God and there is no result in your life, the danger is at a point in time you will become informal about everything God because you do not expect it to produce for you. Are we together now? You will be in church. You will be around the things of God. But you will never truly believe. There are people who are every time God is about to move, they are right at the face of it, but they never believe it will happen in their lives. The Bible says, Blessed is she that believes. Unbelief is a dangerous spirit. It's a dangerous spirit. Unbelief is able to make the word of God as powerful as it is of non effect. He says if you hear his voice he says harden not your heart as they did in the provocation in the wilderness God gave them a word they doubted God's obsession much more than being worshipped is to be trusted God's obsession much more than being worshipped is to be trusted you don't sit down and use your philosophical scientific understanding can god make a way in the wilderness we say is god able to do this and we go to school 
and when we finish school for many people we become very educated and then we become very 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 unwise spiritually because we train ourselves to be so scientific in our approach and then we incorporate our intellectualism even to the things of God so when God says I would do this say no 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 God according to the intelligence according to this research and that research and God says nonsense he upholds all things by the word of his power hallelujah unbelief unbelief is a dangerous spirit it can turn any man regardless of the spiritual potentials you have it can reduce you to ashes unbelief and number two illumination illumination the bible says weeping endures for a night but joy comes with the morning the difference between the night and the morning is the rising of light the bible says jacob wrestled with him all through the night and he said leave me for the day break it he said no way i will not let you go till you bless me and he says what is your name he said i'm jacob he said your name shall no longer be jacob it will be israel for as a prince you have fought with god and prevailed and the bible says his tie was touched and then the sun arose and he called the place peniel you see when you come to church and you just sit down you are casual about it let's see what will come if, if you say word for amen we say amen if you say word to, for falling down we fall down are we together you see, if it's a word for laughing we laugh if it's a word for crying we cry at the end of it we hug one another we share the grace and hope for next week nobody grows that way praise the lord you have to be very intentional about the word of god when the word of god is about to be released that's when satan starts working are we together all kinds of things when the word of god is coming that's when satan rises with all the demon spirits planting distractions planting familiarity planting pride planting carelessness and at the end of it a word that comes that is supposed to set you free and take you to a new dimension becomes profitless see let me tell you something the word of god is not a charm it's not like a genie a charm you put in your pocket and then it just works independent no the word of god must be engaged to produce result please I, I think you need to understand this many and this is the problem with charismatics we think that because we're in the dispensation of grace the word of god will automatically work for as long as it has left the mouth of god it must produce results you are really joking really joking the bible says the seed good seed in all the soils it was a good seed there was never a problem with the seed two there was never a problem with the sower but the soil made nonsense out of the seed to an extent that birds could come and carry the seed with no fear satan does not fear the word coming to you he fears your receiving it and you're acting upon it let me tell you satan knows the word more than many people his fear is not the arrival of the word in your life proximity with the word does not produce change but satan fears when the word begins to give you understanding the moment you begin to have understanding of scripture satan becomes afraid because with understanding you will now begin to take accurate actions and when you take accurate actions you commit god's integrity to whatever the issue is let me tell you something satan's fear is that's why he he may try to stop bibles but his a bible reaching you is not satan's concern that's why you don't see any demon saying stop bible from reaching him no devotionals have it messages have it his fear is not the arrival of the word in your life brothers and sisters but when your heart is determined to engage with the word ah that's it satan will raise every kind of thing to destroy you because the word not understood is the same thing as the word not available write this down the word of god not accurately understood will produce the same result as the word not being available and it's terrible 
because that you have access to the word and someone else who is wallowing in ignorance you will think you have an advantage because the word is near you but you find out that the results are the same so you, you have to desire understanding not just that the word comes to you you must desire understanding there are so many arrogant people in the body of christ who will claim because they have been around the world for a long time i've been a pastor for many years i got born again 1991 i got born again 1980 this and that and they feel that because of their constant wallowing around an environment where the world is it means that they have received it hallelujah please pray one more time and say lord give me understanding let me get this thing once and for all give me understanding lead us along eternal highway we want to walk in the ways of jesus show us the ancient path lead us along eternal highway Let me add one more prayer line, a prayer point. I want you to pray with all your heart and say, Father, let my life produce results. Cry it before God. Please don't be too proud to play this to pray this prayer. Pray with all your heart. You know that your life is not producing the result you desire. Don't come to God's presence and argue. God's presence is not a football cinema where you come and argue and say, Oh God, I'm coming to see if what you are saying agrees with what I know. That, that is nonsense. Pray and say, God, my life must command results. This thing can work. It was designed to produce in my life. I'm not a barren soil. Open my eyes. Let this thing work in my life. Let it work in my ministry. God, let it work in my family. Please pray. Inside, outside, online, pray. Pour your heart into this prayer. Pour your heart into this prayer. Lord, I've been listening to this thing for 10 years and it seems there is a blockage from hell stopping me wherever I want to understand. Something comes and distracts me. My life is paying for it. Show me this thing. Make it plain unto me, O God, for the sake of my children. Make it plain unto me for the sake of the ministry you have given me. Make it plain unto me for the sake of the assignments you have given me. Make it plain unto me for the sake of your glory. I've been around it, but I take responsibility. Lord, I've not understood how this thing works. Show it to me afresh. Show it to me afresh. I've even taught it. I've written books about it. But open my eyes. I am willing to see. I'm not a rebel. Keep praying. Keep praying. Please engage your heart. Don't play games with your destiny. Engage your heart. For the sake of those who are depending on you. You may be the only one in your family having this access. Don't trivialize it. The salvation of many are tied to your understanding this thing. You've got to pray seriously. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please, I want you to sit quietly tonight and listen to me with all humility and with all your heart. Please. You see, when you see me talk like this from the depth of my heart, I wish that God can open my heart for you to see it. 
are we together now it is because i know that no matter how sincere you are sincerity is not the seed for what you are looking for praise the lord you have served god with all your heart let him show us something that will help our lives let him show us something that we will use and wipe the tears of nations but when we are careless you see god god is a very meticulous god when he comes to you he does not cast his spell before swine just that his presence is there does not mean you will be changed automatically he discerns the state of your heart when you come with an arrogant philosophical heart let me see what he has maybe there are one or two things god can add to me that attitude robs you of the fullness of what god can give you Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. He said one thing is needful. He didn't say to listen. He said to sit. It's a sign of rest. Concentrate. Pay attention. When they were about to see a miracle, he said tell all of them to stop all this running around. Sit down by 50s. If you are too proud to sit down, there's no bread for you. You don't eat the bread standing. While the bread is coming, you are busy doing other things. See, let me tell you something. I promise you in the name of the Lord if you pay attention to what I'm teaching you your life will step into a state of rest you will find out that most of this running around is because we do not know the keys a door does not open to any key that you are holding a key does not mean that's the key that opens the door life was not designed to be the way many people are taking we run helter skelter and we think because we are running helter skelter that's where it is we've been trained conditioned by an environment but god is saying this is wrong sit down listen sister brother just listen at least listen by the time the message is over you can now choose to receive it or not but give it a chance to enter your spirit hallelujah when the word is coming that's not when to gist that's not when to ping huh that's not when to send text messages that's not when to download videos that's not when to research languages oh this is a new english language and you waste your time being distracted you see i say these things because that's how satan cheats people so they spend years in his presence and then they can even quote what the man of God is saying but their lives show that they've not gotten this thing father give us understanding tonight I pray oh God that you pour your heart onto us tonight let us see light through your light our hearts are open we submit to your word we're not here to argue with it we realize that your word is final authority in all things and we humble ourselves we truly truly humble ourselves we tremble at your word we let it train us we let it build us and you will be glorified in jesus name amen and amen god bless you again for your glory part two we're rounding up we started last week considering a series that challenges us to allow god to be glorified in our lives and um, we took a dimension of it last week how that self is the motivation behind many of the things that cause trouble in the society please if you've not listened to last week's message I challenge you and I plead with you it's free on the internet and with our media department get it and listen to it you will need it it's a very powerful message I told us that the coming of Jesus it's not just to bring a new testament when you meet Jesus today he's not going to discuss old and new testament there's only one question is going to ask you who sits at the center of your heart it has to be self or Christ and last week we challenged ourselves that the hallmark of the Christian experience is a life that has been replaced by Christ completely enthroned in your life hallelujah so he's not one of the many important things I challenged us that the reason why we do so many things in the body of Christ for many of us largely is, is self-centeredness but that when your life becomes an instrument for his glorification listen that there's no limits to what God can do in our lives hallelujah I really challenged us when Jesus walked the earth 
all his concern listen the concern of jesus was for your glory not for my name for your glory father the hour has come glorify now thy son that thy son will glorify you when jesus came although he was god he never seemed to talk about himself he only spoke about himself with respect to his father anything you are doing that is not for god's glory no matter how spiritual it is it is complete nonsense and will not glorify god your life must be an usher that reflects him why do you want to marry so that people would know that i've come of age no that's not consistent with the motivations for which god gives people miracles why do i want a child because i'm tired of people calling me not barren and we have to be careful because our cultural settings pressure us to want things because there are many points to prove why do i want to be blessed so that my enemies will know that my god is alive that looks very good and there is a place for that but the truth of the matter is that that desire to prove a point will crash you down it has to be for his glory the worship team sang it powerfully for your glory so why do we preach for his glory why are you on that job for his glory when your life becomes a reflection of god's glory there's no limit to what he can give or make out of your life praise the lord and um, we want to take it a little further tonight you will be so blessed and i pray that your heart will be opened in jesus name galatians chapter 1 paul was speaking to the galatian church verse 24 23 24 please galatians chapter 1 let's hurry up media so that we can do much today as god grants us grace galatians 1 i'll read 23 and then we'll read 24 together it's projected it says but they had heard only this was paul speaking about his conversion and how the news spread among the brethren believers but they had heard only that he which persecuted us in time past now preached the faith which he once destroyed 24 i want you to read it with all your heart one to read one more time there are many ways god can be glorified one of the ways the bible shows us that god can be glorified is in a person and they glorified God not just through me they glorified God there was something they saw about my life and when they saw it they said no God you must be glorified and tonight I want to challenge us along that line since we had discussed last week that the the hallmark of the Christian experience is not just doing things it's not even singing worshiping fasting praying doing all of these things as spiritual as they are it is getting to a point where Christ be enthroned but then we must understand that much more than Christ being enthroned he wants our lives to be a reflection of his glory that's how he gets the glory he says and they glorified God in me hallelujah this is a system for God to be glorified because God is in heaven and cannot be seen with the physical eyes we are his representatives the Bible calls us his ambassadors and because we are his ambassadors we promote his interest we are the reflection we give men who do not know God an idea of what God is are we together just like um, when I look at you I may not know how your father or your mother looks but I can suspect I look at you and I say wow it means your father can be this can be that and the day I see your mother I say no wonder you see the similarity so God expects that he our father who has not been seen people we should begin to give people ideas of what he is the fullness of all that is contained in him should already be experienced through our lives and in our lives let me show you something jesus said in john 15 john 15 verse 8 we'll look at it in king james and then if we can get amplified that will be fine john 15 verse 8 jesus was speaking and this is what he said listen herein is my father glorified that means in this this is the pathway to giving my father glory if you ever are interested in seeing my father glorified this is the road to follow like you teach someone how to cook and you say look if you want a delicious meal of jollof rice this is what you do 
so he's giving us the pathway say hearing is my father glorified read on that ye bear much fruit not little fruit much fruit so shall ye be my disciples i love the amplified rendition is it possible for us to have it oh it's not possible amplified puts it in a very very beautiful way amplified actually connects it and it says by so doing it is in your bearing fruit you prove that you were trained by me i didn't watch a lot of movies but there used to be these movies about kung fu fighting and um, the little i know about those movies every master had children all these small boys that he trains around and occasionally they have competitions is that true where different schools come so the masters don't fight they train you and sit behind and those who they train will compete when they beat you and they whip you you don't get angry the one who trained you is the one who gets angry because it means your school is bad it means it's not good so the pride of the master they bring their best uh what they call it their best fighters are we together and when when the other person is beating someone else you see the master nodding in agreement that's right i taught him this i remember that skill that that is me that's what i would have done there i would have punched him in that exact way you got him right and when he wins he run he does not run out and just he runs back to the master and say job done as you taught me i broke his leg i destroyed him the bible is saying god is watching i have given you the word i expect something it's like an investment i made on you and god is watching my reputation is at stake at the mercy of your living out the fullness of all that i am and so he says i am waiting satan also releases his arsenals we meet in a big stage called the earth here and god is standing in heaven and satan is saying you drove me but watch what happens watch the nonsense i'm going to make out of those you claim you died for and then he whips us with everything from sickness to failure and then he not only whips us he educates us into believing it is god and to increase the mockery we now turn and say lord i thank you because this has to be you and satan says god how about that i told you if i don't get you directly i look for your image are we together now hearing is my father glorified that after a season of training you he gives you access to the word he now begins to watch when your life begins to be a reflection of his dominion when your life begins to be a reflection of his excellence when your life begins to bear fruit your life now begins to testify so when someone reads in the bible and says ah god is faithful he looks around where is the scripture i can relate with this that scripture is not first corinthians that scripture is called pastor alpha he's a life a living epistle that explains that scripture so the testimonies you see that you know why we clap you know why god was also clapping in heaven because their lives all those who came here their lives are testaments of men and women who engage the word and it produced results so why do we clap we clap because we are saying satan shame on to you are we together now satan you tried to kill that lady but she's standing and walking on two legs you wanted to ground her legs to walk on wheelchair forever but something about the word she engaged a principle and it brought that result so god is glorified that's why it is called a testimony that means the only way god is glorified is when your life becomes an unending script of testimonies that reveal the multifaceted possibilities in God that your life can be a book someone can read and say my God you mean God is this mighty I never knew but haven't heard of what has happened to a Jimmy I know God is mighty hearing is my father oh they found it when you bear or produce much fruit listen it says my father is honored are you seeing that now and glorified and you show and prove yourselves to be true followers hmm.
when you give birth to a son who does not look like the father and the mother do you know that that child can create argument one day the man can call the mother during a heated conversation and say look there's something that's been bothering me for 12 years i am deeply concerned about the way this guy is behaving and how he's looking is there any story you want to share with me my heart is open why because that child is not reflect it doesn't look like the father doesn't talk like the father does even there is nothing about the father not even the mother so they begin to ask a question are we together so god is counting you know we brag with his name and he expects that something about our results should have his stamp on it if you walk in julius badger you should be able to show me their id card one day otherwise i know you are a liar and you are a crook are we together if you mold block as a julius badger worker you should be able to throw it up and it should not break on the ground that's how i know that you are not the person who just did that thing and, and i mean if you did it with julius badger it should come in with excellence but we claim we know him hey, jimmy we claim we have met him we even claim he spoke to us and then our lives show we don't know him at all i will worship him forever love him forever because this god is too good i will worship him forever love him forever because this god is too good see our lives are supposed to explain scripture our lives are supposed to be an explanation to every aspect of scripture because satan's assignment is to prove that everything about god is a lie his statements his resurrection his goodness when you say god is a good god satan says all right me i don't talk too much but i act how many times have you had satan talk? satan is a good actor we talk too much satan says you keep shouting god is a good god i will wreck your life into pieces and then you show me the goodness of god and god says forget about satan i have created a system that if you act out you will stamp satan in a way that you will prove that what i said is true but largely we ignore god and then we never get the results let me tell you something brothers and sisters if the only reason why you want results is because of your ego you will never be serious about it are you hearing what i'm saying you know let me tell you something and i admit i'm sorry if i sound proud but one of the gifts that god has given me i cried for it and god gave me one of the gifts that god has given me to bless the body with is balance 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 is the most scarce resource among men of god not revelation not apostasy the biggest problem with preachers is imbalance the ability to construct truth so that it is communicated within the jurisdiction of its relevance and the danger is that our societies are a reflection of the ideologies of different men of god you can see that from 1985 to 1940 this when this man of god held the pulpit this is what he taught a nation they thought like that this is what they became imbalance is as deadly as error are we together so when we begin to communicate the truths of scripture it is important that we must approach scripture with a view to bring him balance so that the bride of christ can be built in a way that she is equal in length equal in breadth equal in height i was discussing with eddie while he drove me here and i was telling him i said you look at us in the north now i will not mention states but i mentioned a few states i told him you see all the traits it came from the church we've not interacted so much with the world we are victims of the sermons of preachers that's what made our parents irresponsible some of you as you are seated now you love god but you had to beg to death for your school fees and your father has not even called you to ask you whether your school fees is paid and your father is a pastor so imagine somebody he has been mentoring for 10 years who is about to get married next week he's going to reproduce that same result imbalance is a dangerous thing 
so i train you in the aspect of prayer i train you in the aspect of your spiritual life you climb scripture but i do not teach you the principles of the word and you think because you are excelling in one area you trivialize another area let me tell you how to know a man of god is arrogant the moment you trivialize the contribution of others in the body is a sign you need deliverance no matter how anointed you are is blindness you need deliverance I was in Yola, I think, when the, people, the uh, uh, radio station wanted to do an interview for me. They were so happy I had come for a great crusade. And they were asking me a question. And they said, man of God, now that you have come into this city, you have come to do, you know, great and mighty things, this city will never be the same. And they were asking me a few questions, the secret of your anointing, what do we expect? And I told them something. I said, I will never discuss my success and impact as a man of God outside of the universal contribution of the church in yola there are men and women of god doing mighty things for god we may be in different dimensions but we are a team building together so i will not come to tear down what the pastors are doing to mean you guys have been doing nonsense here i come apostle joshua selman i've come to show you the rubbish you see that's the mistake all over the world you watch it on tv and you see men of god with their pride they approach truth as though they are the ultimate custodians of the mysteries of the kingdom and you know my fear many of us young people are gullible we are running away and it's clear that certain areas of their lives are bankrupt because they have refused to allow the holy spirit step there so we see people who are prayer warriors, but they are poor, they are dying. So they are bribing here and there, but they will keep quiet and then come and make noise. And then we have others who money is their obsession, is their God. They never even get it. They are on their way to hell. They trivialize every kind of thing. Let me tell you how to know a good church. A man of God who has been given the gift of balance or knows how to outsource relevant people in the body of Christ to create what his grace cannot provide is a good church to be part of everybody say balance those of us here in ministry or trusting God for ministry it must be your heartfelt prayer seek balance more than oratory seek balance more than oratory the ability to speak grammar is nonsense if what you are giving people is rubbish balance i will never pastor people who will be imbalanced it's a covenant i made with god i will teach you everything to build your life holistically you will you can be a prayer warrior a miracle worker a man of character a billionaire a kingdom addict that's right that's how it should be he said come and i will show you the lamb's wife he said and he showed me a city equal in length equal in breadth equal in height no exaggeration that's the lamb's wife any other thing is not the lamb's wife so there are many of us seated right now we are victims of the imbalance of many sincere men and women of god whose messages we have listened to are we together now maybe they have been your pastors growing up maybe they are your mentors and spiritual fathers and whatever it is and i love the body of christ but you have to be careful there is no single man who has the blueprint of all the dealings of god we see impact and we prophesy impact so i must be able to have the unashamedness to let you know as a body although functioning in the office of the apostle that that office gives me the privilege of oversight of the dealings of god as revealed to a dispensation but even at that it cannot be in isolation i'm a product of many anointings i'm a product of many graces i have sat down to pay attention to people some of them i don't even like but i listen to them with an open heart to find out what dimension was committed to them that's the secret of growth this pride this unilateral pride that you catch a dimension you say oh for me i've caught a dimension of kingdom wealth and prosperity and when you hear them talking about the word of god you say no no no, no. all i know is that i'm a businessman it will land you in hot water i'm a prayer warrior ah this and that and that is prayer prayer i know prayer can do everything and before you know it you're like do you know how many believers are frustrated they don't just have the courage to come out that's why our states we left our states to the devil that's what i was sharing with him when we we're coming most of the northern states 
are largely they do not have adults who understand kingdom at the helm of government anybody does everything it came from the church it is that lack of teaching that can make any Tom Dick and Harry get up and bring up any kind of thing against the church because there are no strategic people we are there wallowing away please pray I feel like we should pray and say Lord I insist that my life will be balanced lift your voice I insist Sharato Sakataya Lord where I've been a victim of imbalance or where I have communicated the same sincerely I pray that you help me please cry from the depth of your heart I receive grace for balance I receive grace for balance the Bible says all scripture not part all scripture not new testament all scripture not old testament all scripture is god breathed all scripture inspired by the holy spirit and is profitable all scripture is profitable for reproof for correction for doctrine for instruction in righteousness all scripture all principles shared in the word of God are for the benefit of the church. All scripture, lift your voice and pray. Lord, I close my heart to imbalance. I open up my heart because I know that therein lies the key to my victory. Therein lies the key to my being useful to the kingdom. I will not walk in the error of imbalance and I will not mislead multitudes. pray correct my imbalance correct my imbalance it's made my children beg for bread correct my imbalance it's made me rich but lukewarm spiritually correct my imbalance it's made me trivialize spiritual exercises correct my imbalance hallelujah Please be seated. Matthew chapter 5. This is a very powerful teaching already. Matthew chapter 5, 14 to 16. The words of Jesus teaching at the Beatitudes. This is what Jesus said. Ye are the light of the world. Jesus is speaking now. How many of you know when Jesus is speaking, you listen to him? Greater than any prophet, greater than any apostle, past, present, future. Jesus the apostle of our faith he says ye are the light of the world you know I love Jesus you know we never study what he really taught the people we just know he taught them we don't pay attention to what he taught them this is Jesus now having a conference three days men were on the mountain hearing Jesus teach and in one of his sermons this is what he told them ye are the light of the world then he says a city that is set on an hill cannot be hid next verse says neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel it says but on a candlestick and it giveth light to all that are in the house read on then it says permit your light permit your light permit the fruit of the illumination you said you fasted permit what came upon you from the fasting to so shine before men you claim you are titan permit the fruit to so shine before who not angels before men that they those men who have been mocking your god will see your good not good intentions replace the word good works with one word results let your light so shine before men that they may see your results right and then glorify your father see how god is glorified let men watch you from the beginning of your engaging the world usually they'll be laughing at you when you are doing it like noah noah being warned hebrews 11 being warned of rain he ran he trembled with fear gathered gopher wood for 100 years 
he was building they were laughing at him stupid man you just threw away your career just because you had the voice of a ghost but he was engaging it when the last animal entered god locked that door and the bible said the heavens released their water the earth released their water whoever was in between was a sign that he was disobedient the same way the bible says the heaven of many people will be brass and then under will be iron do you know what it means to stay in the middle of brass and iron that they may see your results god is interested listen please brothers and sisters your primary motivation behind getting results should not just be a pressure for achievement are we together now this is the mistake behind just um, now there is a place for motivating people don't get me wrong but this is the the mistake that many people make if the entire scope of your teaching is just to motivate people so you make them do great things for themselves when i realized that my success is also a message that enthrones christ i i stopped paying attention to only my secret place i started paying attention even to my results because both your personal growth and the results you produce the bible says it can glorify the name of christ when we heard all of them coming to testify i saw some of you standing i saw some of you clapping with all your heart jesus was being glorified they were thanking me but really jesus was being glorified are you seeing that now because something was taught they believed it they applied it it worked for them hearing is our father glorified pastor alpha when your results begin to glorify god so the way you glorify god is not just by singing alone you can sing songs but god wants your life please hear me everyone god wants your life to give him glory as a father by the time you have preached on the principles of fatherhood and then people watch your life your children are responsible are we together now there's food in your house you are not worse than an infidel because you can cater for your family you are responsible there's peace with your wife no boxing anybody in the name of that's how we do it in our village you see christ is being glorified someone comes to your home and reads many scriptures without opening the bible he knows that jesus is the prince of peace has never believed a man and a woman can live for two years without quarreling and they are seeing it for the first time your light is shining before men they are seeing it and they are glorifying the recession has been whipping and biting people hook line and sinker when someone comes to your house and you hold the hands of your wife and say look let's squeeze he's been crying the child is, is i mean there's a problem this child is about to be thrown from school how much is the school fees Forty thousand. okay take how much is your rent again One hundred and twenty thousand. okay the lord has led us this is one hundred and fifty thousand. and you say at this time of recession sorry is it borrow or give no 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 not borrow the lord bless you freely we have received from him freely we give madam are you in agreement absolutely i love my husband that person lives with that money and a message that recession is not a personal language there are people who have been exempted since it's not just this year they were exempted since are we together when people are dying left and right like chickens dying left and right like chickens you have a dream someone slaps you you wake up from your head to your toe is paralyzed the doctors check they tell you well something is wrong or nothing is wrong and then you are dying are we together now something is mocking god there and then all of a sudden you find out something in the world and you engage it and you clear that devil off your body are we together and you get up like our sister was standing strong you have demonstrated something the victory of Christ hallelujah you have won the victory hallelujah hallelujah you have won it all for me death could not hold you down. You are the risen King. Oh. 
Alaba la cosa. Seated in majesty. You are the reason king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. after me when I produce results Jesus is glorified say it again when I produce results Jesus is glorified I want you to say it for the last time convincingly when I produce results Jesus is glorified let me tell you make no mistakes about the fact that God wants your life. Do you know how obsessed God is with results? The two, two expressions in the Bible show that. Number one was the cursing of the fig tree. He came because the tree is eating from the earth. Is that not true? Connected to the earth. And it was green. Jesus was hungry. He ran there and found out the tree had been deceiving them. And he said... He cursed it and he said no fruit will grow from it again. And by the next day it withered. Number one. Number two was in Matthew 25. He used a parable to show how that he does not waste resources. He gave unto one five talents. Is that true? Two talents, one. The other foolish one said he went to bury it. And then when Jesus came, instead of him to say I'm sorry, I was careless, add one more year and I will show you I'm serious. He said I know you. That offense is the hallmark of men who never get results. They are angry at God and they are angry at those who are producing it. So they create theological explanations to excuse they are not producing results. I'm sure he had been saying, let Jesus come. I will see. When he came, he said, I know you. You are a hard man. You like reaping where you did. So it's me you are using as a donkey. You see his mindset? He was not a steward. He wanted to be an owner. I know you. You want to use me to build your ministry. So I decided that uh, I even am you are even lucky that I buried it. Here is your talent. And he said, depart from me. He would have said, depart from me. Lousy and proud man. He said, wicked one, two, unprofitable servant. Cast into outer darkness. Where there is crying and gnashing of teeth. Look how Jesus is grave about a life that is barren. In the physical, when a man gets married to his wife, especially in Africa, when they give you two weeks, they have tried. After two weeks, everybody is looking. Is she coughing? No. Then somebody will just joke and say, we are waiting for Junior. They are speaking a subliminal message. After six months, even the man, the woman begins to be concerned. Are we together? Two years. Three years, they now tell the man, marry another wife. In other words, we hate unfruitfulness. And in as much as you pay dowry for this woman, return it and marry another woman. That's how much in our culture we love results. But when a life is barren, we say it's the will of God. And we create stupid explanations justified by scripture. I've told you the Bible is a prophetic book. You can make it preach anything. That's why you can find the Bible in a herbal shrine. And the man will open to something, Psalms 2, and say, the Lord will laugh. And then after reading it, now concoct the charm and say, take it and, and watch it. That is still a charm. Are we together now? God is interested in your results. Please make no mistakes about it. When you walk in divine health, and the older you get, the fresher you become, God is glorified. Critics may not be glorified, but God is glorified. And how many of you know there is only one person you owe explanation to your life? God. Not critics, not those who understand you or not. That's none of their, that's their business. God, be glorified. When other people, they say, um, now young people are having high blood pressure and they test you. And the doctor says, it looks like you're a 10-year-old child. You say, you are right, doctor. 
you are right age is just a number the word of god renews me is it not in your bible they that be planted in the house of god he said they shall flourish in the courts of our god in old age they shall be fat and flourishing not wrinkled and dying whipped by life no are we together how many young people in nigeria look at do you know um, I, I sometimes do you know how people are suffering in nigeria right now and are you seeing how several of us preachers are so unconcerned about the plight of people we never bring relevant teachings that help to address their pain a man treks with his wife and five children loyal he's a sanctuary keeper in your church he treks with his wife from a place maybe like paladin and treks and comes and they are scrubbing the church with joy hoping that you would teach them what to bail them out and then you come up and trivialize their problems and say it does not matter the most important thing is that you serve god and god says no no you are making me selfish the kingdom works when you seek him first but then there is a provision for your welfare too otherwise why will we not call god selfish the theology that we propose if not well balanced will make god look like such a selfish god we may not have the courage to say but it looks like lord everything is about you so my whole life what is my own and god says i'm not like that i'm love while you were yet sinners i gave something for you if i offered my son will i not much more with him freely give you all things in other words if you are not getting it is your pastor it's not me joshua Selman is lying to you somewhere you go to churches and watch people come and meet the pastor and say pastor five of my children their school fees are not paid i love you i'm the prayer band leader in my church my rent has expired and he looks he say look that's not the issue the most important issue is what shall separate you from the love of God. That's true. And after praying, because the pastor himself is not rich enough or too greedy to do it, he may have the money in his account, but he's too greedy to release 300,000 and will not teach the people what happens. Do you know, most times, this kind of wrong teaching, the only people who benefit are the pastors. Because at the end of preaching that error, I'm standing with a nice suit. There's food for me. Oh. I don't know whether there's food for you, but there's food for me after Koinonia this night. I don't know whether you people will be trekking, but all I know is that there is a car taking me home. Are you seeing that? I don't know whether you are going to be sleeping outside. I will be lying down under AC, enjoying myself. I must be a wicked man of God to be walking in that dimension and not respond to your pain. Who lives in Nigeria now and ignores the reality of the fact that people need the dimension of God that can respond to their succor. They call religion the opium of the masses. They call it a strategy to take advantage of the masses because it was wrongly communicated. Everywhere the gospel was received, it brought civilization. It not only built men spiritually, it changed their level. Say amen. Amen. I look at many of our mothers and some of our elderly people who are here and I look at the sacrifice they pay to wait this late. There are some of you as you are seated right now, you are young people, maybe just working or a student or a graduate, but your loved ones, five of them, they are depending on you to take care of them and you are not getting the key. The little 10,000 you are getting is pushing you and now pastor, because that's what we do as men of God, we now say there is a contribution. Everybody is going to bring seven, seven thousand. You have ten thousand. I forced you through messages and courses to bring three thousand, to bring seven thousand. The remaining three thousand, you are in trouble and you are dying. Edrimi, members are crying. A good shepherd lays down his life, does not keep his ego and allow people to die. Anybody who loves God and loves his people should, if you cannot give all of them money, share with them the principles. And let them know that when you rise out of recession, God is glorified. And they glorified God in Koinonia. God is being glorified in several ways. You come in, you find people inside and outside, thousands following online. People say it does not matter. God says it matters. It matters to me. 
Jesus, you be lifted higher, higher, be lifted higher. Jesus, you be lifted higher. Our King be lifted up. Let our King be lifted up. Oh, Let our King be lifted up to our lives. Let my King be lifted up. Oh, down results are not accidental please write it down we have agreed that it is important for our lives to bear fruit we have agreed that our results glorify God God is not only glorified in our worship and our sacrifices which is important he's not only glorified when we enthrone Christ at the seat of our lives he's glorified when we bear much fruit write this down results are not accidental semicolon they are the results of walking the mysteries of the kingdom you have to write this down results are not accidental they are the product of walking the principles the secrets the mysteries of the kingdom many results never happen in business results don't just happen in marriage results don't just happen in education results don't just happen in ministry in leadership results do not just happen which which debunks the fallacy that has been proposed for many years in the church if god wants it done he would do it it looks spiritual but it's very dangerous the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord the Bible says says but the earth has he given to the sons of men and he gave them a command he says and he blessed them and saying be fruitful multiply replenish subdue have dominion so if anything is to happen in my life I must be a contributor to making it happen see let me tell you something admit this sincere truth and your life will change nothing of value is free nothing of value is free it is either paid by you or paid by someone for you nothing of true value Bishop Oedeko made this statement many years ago nothing of value nothing of value is free that's why you don't pay you pay school fees even for marriage as free as it is you pay dowry they write a list and give you even if it's your uncle that grew up with you every day and say uncle i've been looking at your daughter he says all right get a clean sheet of paper buy rice buy yam you would think you will be forgiven no no matter how much you are forgiving he will pay in kind in cash or both nothing of value is free meaning if you are not ready to pay the price for your success forget about it there is a price please understand this don't let anybody indoctrinate you into believing your life will change in the sweet by and by there is a price for the outcome of your life what you see today by the grace of god was intentionally done there's nothing accidental about what god is doing by his grace and there are many men and women here by the grace of god i had the privilege to see their lives i saw them engage these things and i see the results that are speaking now say my results must speak say it again my results must speak results are not accidental they are a product right you must engage something engage something you must do something there is always something to do good master what should i do to be saved that's the freest thing we know in the new testament salvation but here's how a man got it good master what should i do believing is doing something believing is not cheap 
it takes it takes the labor of the word for a man to believe as free as believing looks you have to get it good master what should i do to be saved that's a good businessman no wonder he was rich what should i do the poor one just had mercy on me but the wealthy man knew he must do something he must engage something Psalm 25 verse 14 what is what how are results produced what is really the mystery behind results in the kingdom please write this down results are produced when we have access to and understand secrets comma mysteries principles results are produced when we have access to and understand secrets mysteries principles the laws of the kingdom were designed to reflect the justice system of God and the Bible says righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne so the Bible says this David a man who was a mighty man never conquered in any war great man did several great things for the kingdom this is what he has to say the secret of my exploit is that the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him and he will show them his covenants ah, there are secrets brothers and sisters how many of you have a Jimmy's wife is here excellent excellent um, baker confectionery person she can make anything cake if you want her to draw your face she can draw it on the cake I mean anything at all you want her to draw koinonia she can draw it on the cake absolutely fantastic but do you know that if I meet hope now and I say hope show me how to make cake she will show the general thing because I'm not serious most likely because I didn't pay for it as she's talking I'll be answering the question sorry sorry this that's the teacher so she keeps those things as secrets and there will be a condition for her to reveal it it's worthy of being revealed but not to everybody so God hid certain things they are not in the outer court he calls them secrets there are things that are at plain sight you see it but there are things you will read your Bible and never see it they are called the secrets of the Lord the Bible says they are with them that fear him and he will show you so God will call you like a conference room you know how you meet a millionaire and he says you've served well come I will take you to a room you've never gotten to and I will show you brothers and sisters you see this my life is a product of this secrets mysteries God will take you and tell you look this is what produces this when you do this it will happen when you do this this is how satan will strike forget about him just do this one and it will take care of him you rise up from those secrets and say i have it look when you say you have dominion it's not that you are a talkative dominion means you are privy to an understanding the american president moves you don't see him moving with bulletproof around try to shoot him before your gun gets there you are dead because there is a secret you don't know there is something about u.s intelligence that is beyond the plain sight you insult him in the secret someone knocks your door and says you are needed in the police station you say me what did i do you say well just you, you will find out because there is an intelligence system do you teach americans u.s intelligence no they are americans but they don't have access to that intelligence there are people who are taken to a camp that is never shown on tv and they train them rigorously there's something they call war college in nigeria is that true they take men there only God knows what happens just like there are secret prisons when you are a capon and you are a nuisance to society they drag you is inside the river the prison is inside the river you escape is still the same thing you die there I 
are we together the secret things brothers and sisters what do you know that gives you confidence don't do bold face before life if you are not holding anything don't stand before pharaoh if you have not seen the burning bush you will die like a chicken hallelujah let me show you something please sit down job 29 long reading 4 to 20 please are you learning something this night results are predictable results are not accidental seeing then that god is glorified when my life produces results then i must pay attention to the principles and the mysteries that are responsible for producing those results here's what job said job he said as i was in the days of my youth huh? read on when the the secret of the lord there was a time i was a poor young man and God, I did something that made God come to me. And he said, Job, come. Let me show you something. Let me show you what makes people influential. And he showed him. He said, the secrets of God was upon my tabernacle. Like a library that you read. Let's see the effects of his access to that secret. Reading down to 20. Quick reading, please, media. Help us. Verse 6. He says, help, help him, please. When I wash my steps with butter what brought that effect secrets and the rock poured out rivers of oil the rock does not oil, but there is a mystery that makes it happen when i went out to the gates holding these mysteries brothers and sisters he said when i prepared my seat in the street eight the young men saw me accessing this mystery and the bible says they hid themselves they said this guy is not a normal human being what is he trading on that is producing these supernatural results and the agent arose and they stood up do you know what it means for an elderly person to stand up before a child remember as a young man the princes refrained from talking and laid their hands on their mouth verse 10 the young men saw me and hid themselves uh, you are going back again please help us the nobles held their peace and their tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth uh -huh. when the ear heard of me it blessed me brothers and sisters this is what happens to a man who accesses this thing any man and when the eye saw me it gave witness to me next verse because i delivered the poor that cried when god was teaching me those secrets he showed me something so every time i saw the poor i didn't sympathize with them i delivered them there was something i did to the poor the fatherless and him that had none to help him uh-huh the blessing of him that was ready to perish came upon me someone was about to die till i showed up i did something and he blessed me and I caused the widow's hearts to sing for joy. 14. I put on righteousness and it clothed me. My judgment was as a robe and a diadem. I was eyes to the blind and feet was I to the lame. Uh -huh. I was a father to the poor and the cause for which I knew not. I, I was humble is part of the reason why I was great. Every time I saw result and I did not see it in my life, I didn't argue and explain it away. I humbled myself like a scientist and I searched it out. 18. Okay, 17. And I break the jaws of the wicked and pluck the spoil from his teeth. That's authority, brothers and sisters. When I searched it out, I found something that granted me access to break it. In the, and then I said, I shall die in my nest in peace. And I shall multiply my days as the sand. Part of the secret, something was shown to me. Of how a man can live a fruitful life. And how I can add to my days. Hezekiah did it. There was something he touched that multiplied his days. That means there's something you can touch that will shorten your days. You are supposed to live 100 you do something it takes it to 85 some of us now we have done it to 40 you better learn what takes it back learn what takes it back fast before you find out you have two more years you learn it that is in your bible please let's go back to 18 
18 please right and I shall multiply my days I will do it ah like saying I will fry egg I will multiply my days see how we fear death yet a man was saying do you know in all of in all of Job's trouble he never talked about death in other words he knew that look look we are discussing life here it's just that this is the worst form of life but death is another law just leave that one these guys trivialized satan they made nonsense of him our generation is so bankrupt of secrets so satan masquerades as such a great man i always give this example have you seen someone lying somewhere saying his father is a director he's a ceo just because nobody who grew up with him knew him the moment he sees you coming and you know him you say this guy why are you here you are here to bust my tire now satan only talks when there are people with ignorance there are some of us when he sees us he will refrain because we know you are number one you are not omnipresent you are not omnipotent you are a liar you are a thief you walk with people's minds if i have if i have a dream and i see somebody with gun wanting to shoot me and all these funny things if i get up i'm not even going to pray about it not because i'm just doing bold face i understand that satan without the cooperation of your mindset his hands are useless if your mindset limits the word why wouldn't it limit satan your mindset limited the word of god how much more satan so all, all those things are nonsense you see that revelation alone gives me sound sleep if an owl is crying in front of my 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 window it can cry till morning as far as i'm concerned you're a creature you're a creature whatever spirit is in you is not recognized When an owl starts barking, then I'll come out and check because it's unusual. But for as long as you are doing what you are doing, I will sleep. Gone are the days you come out and say, in the name of this owl, I'm tired of you. Nineteen. My root was spread out by the waters. Listen to this. And the dew lay all night upon my branch. 20. My glory Shabalakataya was fresh in me, and my bow, the symbol of my strength and authority, was renewed. This is a man who gave a secret, and he said the reason why this happened was that the secrets of the Lord were upon his tabernacle. Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2 a king had a dream forgot the dream and the interpretation and wanted to kill everybody because he was angry and something happened Daniel chapter 2 we're reading from verse 15 we'll jump 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 I'll show you the scriptures 15 so they were they were going to kill Daniel and his you know these friends and all of that and he answered and said unto Ariok, the king's captain, Why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Ariok made the, the thing known to Daniel. The king was angry. Anybody who cannot tell me the dream I had, I will kill him. 19. And Daniel went in. 19. 19. Then was the... Everybody say secret. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. And Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Read from verse 20. We'll continue. So Daniel went to bed and saw that secret. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever. For wisdom and might are his. Next verse. Next verse, please. Down to 22. He and he changed the times and seasons and removed kings and set up kings he gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding 22 he revealed the deep and secret things he knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him that's the god we serve and that's what he can do to men read 27 and 28 27 and 28 i'm trying to show you these scriptures listen daniel answered in the presence of the king and said the secret which the king had demanded cannot the wise men comma find out whether you are part of these people so you just know up hand that you will never find the secret of god it's not for wise men men in their wisdom 
the astrologers comma the magicians comma the soothsayers all these men cannot see it show unto the king 28 but there is a god in heaven hallelujah <laughs> ah, yeah. the native doctor cannot see it oh. he will claim he can see it because he will concoct charm and a voice will speak through the pot he will manipulate your mind into believing he's in absolute control Daniel said don't mind them they can't see it he said but there is a God in heaven and it is in his character to reveal secrets he revealed secrets and made known unto the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall happen in the latter days open my eyes let me see will you open my eyes let me see open my eyes let me see open my eyes full of men and women who did ordinary things and then once and again certain strange men just appear and it's like a graph extraordinary exploits by the hand of God then you find ordinary men again then someone will show up in a generation then you find people doing whatever again and then you show up let me tell you something I have spent my life like an astrologer watching the stars I have spent my life searching out the mysteries of the kingdom since I found out that these were the things that were responsible for results I don't trust men I don't trust their philosophies 80% of the knowledge circulated in the world is useless to your life and destiny and eternity I don't trust them I don't trust the things they say in the news I go to the Word of God show me the mystery that will give me grace show me the mystery many people let me tell you before god granted me grace to walk in the anointing there were many people who were talking about the anointing when i looked at their lives not to condemn them i knew these guys were not they didn't get this thing but they will never understand you can meet them and ask them uh -uh, but why didn't this result happen instead of them to say well i don't know this far they say look it's because of this i didn't trust them and i went to god i said lord there must be an answer the thing i did not know i searched out i searched out Lord, why are some people filled with the Holy Ghost and others not? Lord, why can a preacher be so anointed, filled with the Holy Ghost, yet his church never grows? Why is it that people can do publicity, put balloons, and it will never happen? Lord, why is it that a man can serve you so much and yet be broke and worried about finances? And God started referring me to his body. Various men and women who through their sacrifices have accessed these things though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river listen though we are few that's what I want you to hear we're surrounded by many we're surrounded by many surrounded by many surrounded by many they are all over your pride has stopped you from seeing them we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before when people tell you they have not been sick in a long time you don't believe it because you think it's a lie no 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 it's a lie when people tell you they have not been broke they will never be broke again you say it's, it's not true you're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before you are not the first to be attacked by witches my father's mother well i don't know they, they said she was a christian i know she was an idol worshiper praise god are we together my father not my relative you see when you hear people talk you think they don't know witchcraft me that demons pressed personally it's not like the one you are not seeing anybody you are just feeling hands i saw them i they looked at me i looked at them they pressed me shouted jesus nothing happened i was still a preacher 
I shouted Jesus, shouted blood of Jesus, it had no effect on them. But preachers told me, just shout Jesus, something will happen. I did it, nothing happened. The secrets of the Lord. There is more to that statement than just you have been shouting it, nothing happened. Don't we have feel <laughs> we're surrounded by many the same way the Bible says they shall lay hands on the sick brothers and sisters be honest the last person you laid hands on what happened you even you you were laughing at yourself but the Bible says if you do it you see when the Bible tells you to do something and get results and you do it and don't get results there is more to it there is more to it the same way you see someone driving you think he's just putting gear and firing you enter and the next thing you are in the hospital because it's more than what your eyes are seeing father as i read scriptures what am i not seeing open my eyes see when you carry the bible just like a scientific book bring ye all your tithes into the house and you have been tithing but nothing has happened because all you have been doing is giving God tithe see let me tell you something brothers and sisters your attitude is the tray upon which your tithe must be presented upon for to be accepted a tithe can be rejected there is an acceptable worship honor an attitude So many people stand with their envelope you look at the preacher and you are angry lift it up father in the name of jesus you just throw it inside the plate and you are angry these wicked people my tight you they say did you tight you say yes no you didn't tight you brought money to church i guarantee you you just gave tight you didn't bring you brought money to church but there is somebody who goes with understanding lord you brought this to me first i love you Two, I'm obedient. I know you are not a liar. So I bring this with understanding. And you tie it. Are we together now? With understanding. Do you know many people give? There are people who come to give, give here as if they are bribing. They just say, Apostle, God has blessed you. And then they are putting their hands in their pocket. And then they squeeze my hand and want to, and say, what is this? This is not a bribe. If you are giving, give it with understanding. Let me speak a word of prayer. Don't give as if you are bribing me. I'm not looking for the money. You see the attitudes we display. These are the things that disqualify our giving. A man preaches, you want to give him honorarium. You wait till he enters the car. Then you just look and say, sorry, Pastor. And while other people are talking, you just say, take, 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 take. We're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. It's time for you to start learning why these things are not working. Brothers and sisters, I've opened your eyes that there are secrets. There are secrets. There's a secret that brings a crowd to a ministry. The secret is not publicity. I, we have proven this with all humility and by the grace of God if all you want to do is publicity you will waste money on posters and flyers and balloon and everything there is a secret this is to the miraculous it's not just shouting you know a lot of people see us shout here and then they go to their ministries they clash the symbol everybody at the count of three you are going to shout Jesus one like a charm two oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. And everybody shout and they're looking around because we'll do it again and then at the end they say okay don't worry you didn't fast you didn't have unbelief it's not in all those motions there is more than meets the eye are we together there are three areas i want you to contend to know the secrets we're going to pray three areas especially in this season God wants to be glorified through the church number one number one the secret to accessing the presence and the anointing of God upon a man's life and upon a corporate body the secret the law that governs the manifestation 
of the presence of God an authentic unction upon the life of a man and upon a system you must cry and contend to know the secrets that are responsible for this number two Are you ready you must find out the secret listen please very careful the secret to living in divine health and longevity write it down what is the key that governs not just divine health but longevity there's too much fear of death I began to study there are seven things that I studied in my life trusting God for the secrets but of these seven these three are the ones the Lord revealed to me and said let my people get this knowledge in these three areas I show you the key to peace especially in these times of turmoil health and longevity is there a system in God where a man can walk healthy brothers and sisters if I were pretending this thing you will know by now I can't be sick and come up here and act well you will see it you will know you will know that this thing is a lie I don't count we have doctors all around we've taught it here we're a very responsible ministry I've visited people in hospitals but I'm saying don't be ashamed of your current understanding but content knowing that there is a reality if you don't believe there is a realm of health and wholeness do you believe that there is an anointing to heal HIV? Do you believe that the testimonies you've been hearing here that people have been healed of diseases? That means you don't believe it. Are you seeing that now? How can a man want the healing anointing and you do not believe divine health and longevity is true? It means you are a liar. You are only playing games. If I sit down on a wheelchair for a number of years, and one leg is not strengthened and they tell you I can stand up and then the leg will receive strength and you say no 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 scientifically this is not working why should you be given a healing anointing to stand in a stadium and command people in wheelchairs where you have not seen you see some legs they cut someone else's leg to join in the current person's leg yet you believe he can walk oh come on I'm a believer oh. I'm a believer I'm a believer when you dwell in God's presence it's easy to believe when you keep listening to junks and nonsense you will be surprised how you will not believe God because when you talk all the people who are in your area you say no no you are being fanatical you people these Christians but no 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 I am the way I am reality the truth anything that is not me is a lie I am reality longevity you need to live long listen listen do you know why many people fear death it's not because they are afraid of death in itself they are afraid because they cannot control it anything you cannot control you are afraid of you are about to travel some of you will be traveling tomorrow to various places you are sweating Somebody says, come and collect money in Kaduna and return. You say, ah, it's not worth it. Let me travel. Because of 40 minutes drive, let me die. Send it through an account. I will collect it somewhere. I say, my bank is not inside. I say, no problem. Just do it. Fear. I refuse to fear. In the name of Jesus Christ, I refuse to fear. There is a mystery that keeps men long. Number three wealth and prosperity kingdom wealth and prosperity you must study the secret of financial empowerment at a personal level and at a corporate level those of us who are pastors here in churches you must find out what is the key i've told you the key is not business the key is not business the key is not business business is an expression of what you know business is simply a platform that gives your understanding expression without that understanding the platform is useless the key is not business the key is an understanding a construction first in your spirit and then your understanding 
and then all the physical avenues are simply platforms whether job business whatever you call them do you believe what i'm sharing with you or are you still arguing it like many people will argue and say it does not work by god's grace i have paid the price to study these things in my own personal life i still am studying them but to an extent i have seen the hand of god and to an extent we have seen this even in this ministry i hate speaking sometimes because of this because people who don't understand think we are boasting and all of that no we will never beg as a ministry till jesus comes never there's no need we'll be wicked if we do so because he has been faithful too faithful too faithful our dinner is on sunday there is recession melting people down Yet we are celebrating our workers and we are doing it with all gladness. When we shared, we looked at the budget of the dinner. Some of the people, even the leaders, some of them were a bit surprised. A budget that can build house for somebody. You are now using it to eat in one night. That's what happens when you pay attention. My son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from you. That's somebody's salary for many years spent in one night to tell workers thank you recession is hitting hard and melting down we have never stopped transporting people we don't boast to have arrived but it's a sign that this thing works i'm saying this to encourage you that it can work brothers look at me there is this plague that is sweeping nigeria and sweeping young men young men are afraid young men that are supposed to be bold you go to school and struggle for years but you are still moving around as if you've never seen the wall of a school why because of fear fear looms many young men what will i do someone sent me a text i think it was day before yesterday that he doesn't know why he married i said what is what is the meaning of that you are sending a text you don't know why you married yet the recession has not started This thing has been prophesied by several men of God. I say it, I, I listen to the messages, I prophesied it. I told you people, those who are announcing that it's going to come and be over. I respect every, I don't condemn any man and any ministry. But brothers and sisters, I tell you the truth by the grace of God. It is not going to end. Not soon. I guarantee you. It will be worse. I have seen it with my two eyes like I'm seeing you. But upon them that fear my name. The son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. Therefore shall you discern between them that fear God and them that feareth him not. There is a difference. Hallelujah. We we'll keep rising from glory to glory. May you never lack food to eat in your house. That you have to carry a plate to move around and beg for rice. There is a way you come out or that you sit down and you are saying ah somebody a devil just cheaply appears in your dream fires an arrow to your body and you wake up the next day and all of a sudden you know you are going to your grave let me speak to someone here you are having dreams dead men dead things you are quietly sleeping they are feeding you in the night whether you want to eat or not all those things let me tell you there is a place for deliverance but the greater part of deliverance is access to understanding you know i told you these things happen to me most preachers will lie to you and say it didn't happen most people will tell you lies and say it happened to me brothers and sisters i sleep in the night they press me once it's night night i get afraid do you know it was so bad Ejimi? i can hear people talking physically but i can't wake up no, I can't wake up. So you are not the first it's happening to. The day I caught the light, I ran, I ran from maybe you here to BZ and I stood outside and I begged the spirit to come. I didn't cast it. I begged it to come. I cast it in Zaria. It goes to another city. When we go, I drive it from there. You play ball with the spirit. City to city. That's what light does. But many people will not get the light. And then they say, in the name of Jesus, I won't dream. You even fast as you are rounding the last fast in ignorance. Then they come. You see, the devil can make nonsense. You think I don't know. That's the experience of some of us. Three days dry. 
the first day nothing happens the second day you say it's working you know and then the last day as you are saying amen you just drink orange and sleep just orange and there they come <laughs> they rubbish your three days fasting so you now get up and say kai this man must be using charm this thing is not only fasting there, there must be something there is a key or you now carry your bible and put it in your pillow right carry oil and put sign of the cross on your head i'm not mocking you no, I'm, I'm, I'm not i'm not mocking you anything done without revelation is nonsense you can even play koinonia message while he's playing you are sleeping nothing works in itself it is engaged hallelujah praise the lord i remember when i was studying some of the things that god has helped me know now do you know i arrogantly argued with some of them because in my little mind then i felt no these things are not the way when some of these generals wrote these things and i looked at them i said is it really this thing it's not it doesn't match how foolish i was now i look and i i truly see that i deserved where i was if i had known the things that i knew now maybe a few years earlier than i knew them i probably would have been 10 times better than i am and that time sadly there were not many people around who had really gotten this case everybody was trying some of us had the privilege to be the ones leading people and so as you were leading you were just hoping you were right may you walk with accuracy that if you receive a text now listen you receive a text now as i'm speaking and someone says we're waiting for you in front of your house you must die this night you will see us but we have said something good day some people will just say i feel like praying around here that's what i used to do hallelujah a gentleman went to steal recently in my house he got charm from zaria city tied it got charm tied it they still caught him Can you imagine? While Koinonia was going on, he was trying to steal. They still caught him. He shall put his angels charge over you. They shall bear thee up on their wings, lest you dash your feet against a stone. I know you don't believe it. Just say, oh yes, yes. But you must believe it and say, this is true. So a man looks at you and threatens you and say, if both of us wake up tomorrow, you must die. And you say, you know you will sleep too, Abi. Tell him. The person boasting you are not doing night vigil you too you will be you'll be sleeping for six hours you will not know what is happening where is the angel of death that swept over arrogant egypt and some people did not wake up any man playing with your life and prophesying to you is playing with death in the name of the lord jesus christ don't fear men don't let any man threaten you because of anything you threaten god's elect he suffered no man to do them wrong Yea, he reproved kings for their sake, saying, Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Brothers and sisters, you are immune. But this thing is not just hearsay. Please, every lady, lay your hands on your womb. Prophesy to yourself in one minute and say, Me and barrenness are like the east and the west. We will never meet. Go ahead and pray. There's a reason why I'm saying that. Lay your hands on your womb and prophesy. No barrenness. Don't let anybody tell you, oh, it's because everybody is eating spaghetti now. We are eating this and cancer is multiplying. Fibroid is multiplying. Cause it. God is glorified in my body. I have no business with barrenness. This womb will carry boys and girls. Prophesy it to yourself. Don't call what they call conspiracy, conspiracy. Hallelujah. Brothers, lay your hands on your head and say the secrets of wealth must come upon me. Lift your voice and pray in one minute. Lord, you are showing me the secrets. God is giving me a great ministry. There's much to do for the kingdom. I don't have the time to be thinking about money. No, it's a cost. I don't have the
the time to leave my assignment leave everything money 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 grant me grace to get this key and move on to do important kingdom things in my life can't spend 60 years of my life just daydreaming and being obsessed about money carnality over money show me the keys let me not put anybody's daughter on that trouble let me not raise children and punish them because of ignorance please pray you will thank me for what you are doing today lord i'm tired this thing has a way there is a way out show it to me there is a way out oh there is a way out hallelujah now everyone i want you to pray while you are seated will soon stand up but i like you to command every area of your life that has not been working don't just command it to work say lord the secret to make it work please show me even if it's something that has been taught but my eyes have not seen show it to me Sato Sabalakata. my spiritual life is going down and down and down i can't pray for 10 minutes i've tried and tried and tried there is a devil somewhere trying to stop me lord what is the secret to a consistent prayer life what is the secret to a consistent word life i'm tired of this not studying the word i've been lying to people that i study my bible i know i'm not studying it i don't have an appetite for god something is wrong show me the secret i pray and nothing happens i say the same thing anointed people say but nothing happens what is the key to the anointing coming into my life let me speak and let there be results for your glory pray for your health lord i'm tired i've spent over a hundred thousand on my body this year i've spent over five hundred thousand i don't even know what is wrong with me now i know you desire to be glorified in my body i'm tired of being afraid of death i'm a man of god but i fear death i'm a woman of god but i fear death i fear assaults of terrorism i fear accidents I fear the operations of witches and wizards. There's something I need to know. I'm tired of living in fear. Pray. Pray. I'm tired of going to my village because I think I will not come back 2017. I'm tired that they may charm me. Oh, give me access. Give me access. Give me access. Sato Katai. Access, pray. Longevity. Lord, let me be as, as confident as I am sitting on my seat to know I will live long. Let me be confident. And the secret was revealed to Daniel and the secret was revealed to Daniel and the secret was revealed to Daniel finally pray I must break the back of poverty is my agreement with God is my covenant with God to the fourth generation no one has prospered in my family until they serve idols i will not serve idols and i will prosper for the glory of the name of the lord i will not serve idols and i will prosper i will not bribe and i will prosper i will not cheat and i will prosper i will not play fraudulence and i will prosper there is a secret that must be shown to me I know I'm a young man, but I must prosper. Employment or no employment, recession or no recession, there is a secret. Show it to me, oh God. now jump on your feet 
and pray for any other area that has refused to work. I challenge you, show me the secret. Why have I not entered a relationship, oh God? Why are men running away from me? Show it to me. So, when I gather, it scatters. When I gather, it scatters. Show me why, although I've been delivered, I'm still seeing family patterns in my life. The failures of my father's house is still reflecting in my life, although I'm praying in tongues. For the next three minutes, pray in the spirit, blasting tongues. Something must open in the heavens. Something must open. Lord, I must deliver my family. I must deliver my lineage. Tired of poverty. Tired of struggling. Tired of a resultless Christian life. Tired of a life burning of the anointing. Lord, it's not working in my life. I have to admit it this night. Pray, it's not working. Why is it not working? Why is it not working? Why is it not working? I knock on the gates of heaven. I demand an explanation. Nobody is rising in my family. Nothing is working. They serve you, yet no door is open. Oh, pray, pray, don't be tired. Leke teke soto la ba 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 ba. Embretos kapras kalekete. Shakata pras kalekato shadalika. Embreso sete dekete. Mambro zekete kelebo soto ba la ba la ba. Hallelujah. Hearing is my father glorified. When you bear much fruit. Listen. Listen. I want you in the next one minute to pray violently. Knock on the door that controls results. And say Lord for your glory is my, is my turn to testify. I told you nothing happens. For everyone that asked it, receive it. Lord, I've never really had a testimony this year. Why is that so? No one has favored me. No door has opened. No deliverance has happened. Hallelujah. 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 I want you to pray and knock on the door of heaven. Your heart is already right with God, I know that. But I want you to agree with God and say, Lord, between now and Christmas, when we celebrate your coming, can you give me a reason to praise your name this year? I tell you, if you, if you obey this instruction and pray with your heart, 
you will be surprised what my God will do. Lift up your voice and pray. Lord, I agree with you. Shapata. Open strange doors. 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 Do it for your glory. Surprise my father. Surprise my mother. Surprise them. I intercede for them. May the angel of your presence reach them. Give them a miracle. Let that cancer be healed. Let that HIV be healed. Let that barrenness be broken. Let her take in before Christmas. Having a child already in a womb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone shout this after me in the name of Jesus. I decree that every force in the heavenlies programmed a sign to stop results from manifesting in my life to discourage my Christian life I challenge you by the blood of Jesus lift your voice and pray ancestral powers yokes spirits ordinances written in the heavenlies projected by witchcraft and wickedness to stop my life from glorifying God to stop results from happening in my life I challenge you I challenge you I challenge you by the blood of the eternal covenant Hallelujah. Let's take one more prayer point. I want us to release the ministry of angels. Listen. The Bible says, are they not ministering spirits? Let me tell you, hear me. Angels are real. I see them all the time. You will be foolish to believe angels are not real. Not everybody here seated physically in Koinonia is a human being. I have seen them many times as I preach. They sit down like human beings. They are not human beings. I'd like you to pray. Say in the name of Jesus. See, some of you are still joking. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I am an heir of salvation. Therefore, I decree and I deploy the ministry of angels to every area of my life to war and warfare until I become victorious lift your voice and pray I release their ministry release my helpers to come into my destiny release favor I release angels over koinonia the angels assigned over koinonia we release you by the word of god the angels assigned over god's people we release you we release you we release you we release you in the name of jesus Bring miracles, bring signs, bring wonders. Hallelujah. We're out of time, but let's pray. The Holy Ghost is asking me that we challenge the spirit of fear. Look at me. Listen, let me tell you something about the spirit of fear. I tell you, fire is burning in this place. Listen, fear. Is a dangerous spirit 
it stops you from taking God seriously when God speaks fear exposes you to the obvious limitations it's not that they are not there the obstacles are there but God's word does not explain it creates God will not tell you how by next week you will be holding a million in your hand don't be stupid and say God how will it happen who do I know blessed is she that believes he said for unto her there shall be a performance fear of death listen fear of failure fear of not having the money to feed yourself do you know it's fear that make people do all kinds of foolish things you are afraid before you know it you sell your phone because you want 10,000 in your pocket the 10,000 finishes you sell your trouser people sell all kinds of things people have converted and have left God because of fear in the name of Jesus I challenge the spirit of fear over my life over my family over my loved ones over koinonia I declare in the name of Jesus you are banished from my life forever lift your voice and pray there's no fear there's no fear I refuse to fear say unto the righteous it shall be well say unto the righteous koinonia you pray tonight don't look around pray say unto the righteous it shall be well say unto the righteous it shall be well fear of marriage fear of children fear of terrorism after me in the name of Jesus father every prophecy you spoke over my life from January till now that has not happened I want you to know that I still believe you and I agree with you that between now and December 25th I must receive that testimony lift your voice and pray I wrestle with prophecy I agree I agree you said you will heal my father I still believe you said you will heal my mother I still believe you said you will prosper my business prosper my ministry I still believe Please lift your hands. I want to pray for you. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. When you dare to believe God and understand what it takes to get the results you need, I pray for you in the name that is above all names. First and foremost, even as you have prayed, I challenge every force of witchcraft that has been released over Nigeria released over states to frustrate believers and make it look like God's word is not working I command that power to bow in the name of Jesus I command that power to bow in the name of Jesus number two I pray for you the kind of speed that you have not seen from January to now I ask the God that I serve to give you that speed in the name of Jesus. That he will perform his word hastily. Hastily. 
in the name of Jesus. Number three, I pray for you with all my heart. Every secret you have been looking at but you have never really understood. You look at it all the time. But you, are, you listen to the messages. Help them please. But you have not gotten it. I speak upon your spirit. May an unction. The unction that teaches men things. I'm, I'm doing an impartation upon your spirit. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus. May that light shine upon your spirit. May that light, that illumination shine upon your spirit. Any man on earth who is holding your answer, any physical man holding your answer, I put pressure upon their spirit. They must answer you. They must answer your parents. They must answer your loved ones. I pray for you finally every miracle we have received as a ministry this year whether it is in finances whether it is in increase whether it is in influence and impact I pray for you from the depth of my heart beginning from this night I don't care how short the time is I decree and I ask the Lord most high to reproduce that testimony in your life May he reproduce that testimony in your life. Anyone here, hold on please, who is sick in any part of your body, any nonsense the devil has planted, whether you call it fibroid, whether you call it menstrual pain, whether you say barrenness, impotency, whether you call it migraine, SS, AS, bad dreams, witchcraft any kind of sickness right now as I stand here in the name that is above all names may the fire of the Holy Ghost surge through your body and clear that devil out of your life may the fire of the Holy Ghost surge through help them please may the fire of the Holy Ghost my God I tell you I see fire falling on people that's what I see in the spirit fire people are getting healed may the fire of the Holy Ghost surge through your body and clear that devil right now may the fire of the Holy Ghost I say it again standing upon this grace may the fire of the Holy Ghost surge through your body and clean your blood and cleanse your life anyone here called SS AS I command that genotype change now any stranger you were not born with if you were not born with it breast lump fibroid ovarian cyst any devil sitting on your body your body must glorify God tonight therefore I curse that devil I curse that spirit I curse that devil I curse that spirit everything that has stopped you from being productive I prophesy to your hands your hands represent they are symbolic of your productivity when the hands of Samson were tied he could not do anything I pray for these hands may God teach you the mystery of profiting in the name of Jesus he said I am the Lord that teaches thy hands to profit and leadest thou in the way that thou should go may God show you the mysteries may he show you in the name of Jesus lift your voice and give Jesus praise hallelujah please keep standing everyone our time is fast spent but keep standing hold on please there are people here right now who you've heard me preach we've spoken about glorifying God your life your family 
everything about you is not glorifying God number one you are not even born again and you know the kind of family you are coming from that already there are things that can destroy people's lives wherever you are you have heard my voice and the Holy Spirit is telling you this man of God is talking about you you need to come out and hand over your life to Christ or peradventure at one point you have given your heart to Jesus Christ and sincerely you know from your heart that for whatever reason your life has gone haywire and you want to run to him please we have two minutes for you wherever you are it's my pleasure to lead you right now wherever you are inside and outside leave your seat quickly and come you're welcome you're welcome you're welcome are you still coming or you are arguing with jesus the holy ghost is speaking will you still argue with him keep coming god bless you those outside don't say i'm far the devil is a liar leave him and run and come run to jesus like there's fire on the mountain if you're joining them keep coming there are people outside please hurry up and keep coming hurry up and keep coming hallelujah thank you so much for those of you who are out those still joining hurry up and come say after me lord jesus those of you standing please say it seriously say it again lord jesus i love you with all my heart i believe you are the son of god this night i have heard your word and i need help i ask you to help me I receive Jesus into my heart as my Lord and Savior I receive your life and I declare that from today I'm a new creation I'm a new person in the name of Jesus I pray for you now in the name of Jesus father the Bible says as many as who come to you you will in no wise cast away father change the lives of these people transform them sincerely in the name of jesus let this not be some emotional show that they are coming but let them mean it from their heart may your life be transformed in the name of jesus amen and amen now follow the lady waving her hands there's a lady waving her hands please follow her and um she would communicate a few details to you in the name of jesus christ in the name